This article says, for a plunderful new year, being organized is the key. Huh. This place could use a good cleaning. Like this thing. It needs a good dusting. Whoa! Jumping jellyfish! Great Kraken revenge! Who dare disturb my long slumber? Who are you? It is I, Jose Gaspar, last of the buccaneers and lord of the seas. The ghost of Jose Gaspar! We haven't seen you for 200 years! I command you to answer my questions three, and I may let you live to see the morn. Okay, but we have an invasion to get to, so can we get a move on? <laughs> You were the ones that woke me up. Oh, okay, oh, sorry, sorry. 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 Yeah. First question. If you want to be a pirate, you have to have this without fail. To travel around the globe, mateys, you need something with a sail. An airplane? No, he said sail. You don't sail a plane, you fly one. Airplane? What's an airplane? What, what do you mean you fly? What are you, a, a, a bird? The answer is pirate ship. I'll give you two more chances and no more of this trickery or talk of flying. Next question. What fills up a room but takes no space? That's a tough one. Do you have another one? Something a little easier? Yeah. Fine, fine. The answer was light. Oh, like this. <laughs> what, what sorcery is that? A source of light? But where is the flame? This? This is a flashlight. Hey, you live in a confusing time. You can say that again. I don't mean to be rude, but we really do need to get going. All right, one more chance. Answer this and live. The directions to the hidden treasure be on a scroll. Find it and dig right there a hole. What is this? I know this one. It's my cell phone. Pull up your map app. A what? What is that demonic device? It glows with danger. See, it's a phone. It has the internet on it. Everyone has one. Drop that glimmering rock and be gone with you. Uh, the future is exhausting. I need another nap. Live from Bayshore Boulevard in Tampa, News Channel 8 is proud to present the Seminole Hard Rock Gasparilla! Pirate Fast, featuring the 2022 Gasparilla Parade of Pirates, presented by ye mystic crew of Gasparilla. Gasparilla Pirate Fest is sponsored by Discover Your Rhythm at Central Florida's premier resort destination, Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino Tampa. Bud Light Seltzer, no beer, just great taste. And ye mystic crew of Gasparilla, proudly presenting Tampa's signature Gasparilla events since 1904. News Channel 8's broadcast is sponsored by New South Window Solutions, the ultimate Florida window. Visit NewSouthWindow.com for more information. Tampa General Hospital, other hospitals practice medicine, we define it. Diamonds International, for all your treasure needs, come see the sparkle for yourself. And Frontier, do what cable can't with Frontier's 100% fiber optic network. Now, here are your hosts for today's Gasparilla Parade coverage, Jennifer Lee, Jeff Berardelli, Lee Spann, Avery Cotton, Chris Martinez, and Deanne King. Welcome to News Channel 8's exclusive live coverage of the 2022 Seminole Hard Rock Gasparilla Pirate Fest Parade of Pirates. I'm Jennifer Lee. I'm so excited to be hosting the parade this year. Again, it's one of my absolute favorite days of the year. And I'm super excited this year because I'm joined by one of the newest members of the Channel 8 team, our new chief meteorologist, Jeff Baradelli, who has been in Tampa before. I have. Mm -hmm. But this is a return for you and the first Gasparilla in a very long time. First time hosting, right? For, for sure the first time. I partied. I partied in Gasparilla. <laughs> I've never hosted before. 
Yeah, I just literally arrived on a pirate ship like two weeks ago. I don't know if you knew that. I didn't I came, realize that I about came, you. My family and I, we came by pirate ship, we invaded. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so, yeah, I will say this. Is I, it's been 20 years, and of course, I've been a part of Gasparilla's before, but I'm going to really have to lean on you during the day today as my hosting partner here. Well, I'm extremely happy to have you by my side today because I can't recall a time when we've had weather play such a prominent role in the parade. It is a chilly, blustery, not very Florida day. No, but there are a lot of people anyway. Despite there certainly the, are. I mean, of course, last year we weren't able to do it, right? So That's people right. are dying to get out here, and they were not going to let rain, snow, sleet, hail, <laughs> or frigid Florida weather hamper them from coming here. Uh, it's probably the coldest we've seen in a very long time. That's for sure. I mean, the coldest day this year so far. I came down here. I literally drove. No, that's not right. That's right. Pirate I, I ship. I came by did. pirate ship <laughs> over a thousand miles to get away from the cold this, air. I'm hoping this is like one and done for us, and then we'll warm back oh, up as we head into the week. So I, hang in there I if cannot, you can. I cannot wait. We're in some good company, though, too, today. Yes. You do know that. One I do. of your I other do. meteorologists that's is joining right. us. Who, by the way, is perfectly dressed as pirate ring. She looks and good. She looks. She's finally wearing her more natural <laughs> hair today. Lee Span, our pirate on the street, standing by. You lo the locks are looking good, lady. But pirates don't usually look that good. I'm I mean, I've not, I've not met a pirate in my life, but I can't imagine a pirate looks that good. Yeah. Well, I mean, thank you. Although there are plenty of some very good-looking pirates in behind me as well. So yeah, I've got my, uh, my inner pirate is coming out out here. We are along the parade route throughout the after. Afternoon, we will be talking to the crews that have spent all year doing charity work, working together, and of course, building their floats. And so this is their culmination of all the hard work that they do. So we're going to talk to those crews. They have different themes. They have different charities. We're going to let you know all about them. But let's, let's go talk a little bit with who's behind me. All right. So here's a pretty good looking pirates. What's your name? Maria. Maria, so how often do you guys come out for Gasparilla? We come every year. Did the cold bother you today? I actually like it cold. We're not sweating. Yeah. <laughs> Fine. Yeah, so what's your name? Leo. What time did y'all get out here today? Uh, like an hour ago, two hours ago, almost. Yeah. So do you think that there are about the same number of people? Do you think there's less or more? There's probably more, right? Yeah, yeah the weather is so much better. I will say that when you're here and you're in this crowd, you don't feel the wind quite as much. Other people are blocking the wind, right? Yeah, definitely. And the sun is hitting perfectly. <laughs> your, your locks look beautiful. They were talking about mine, but yours look great too. So uh, we'll be looking. We'll be talking to some of these amazing pirates along the along the route throughout the day today, and of course. We're going to let you in on a couple of little pirate jokes. Like, for instance. Oh, but. Uh oh. Let's see. How do pirates like to communicate? I don't know. Eye to eye oh. communication. Oh, wow. Guys, back to you. Wow. That's good. It was good. Um, I would say that was a dad joke, but I've been corrected many times. That there's no dad jokes. They're just jokes. They're just bad jokes. But that, but actually, she pulled it off. I could, she I could, did. I could not have pulled she, that off. That she was good. nailed it there. Yeah. And you know, Lee is not the only member of our morning team that is out here on the parade route this year. Uh, for the very first time ever, News Channel 8 has a float right. in the parade. I like it. Our very own Chris Martinez, Avery Cotton, and Deanne King are on board that float, and we want to send it out to them to find out how things are looking. Hey, Jeff and Jen, yeah, we're about to take off any minute now. We are down on Bayshore Boulevard, and gosh, it has turned out to be a beautiful day despite the cold weather. Yeah, it is absolutely gorgeous out here, and what's been so great is seeing so many people turn out. Everyone's so excited to have Gasparilla back this year. Yes, we are all bundled up for the first time yeah. on our WFLA float. It's fantastic. The float is fantastic. We have tons of beads. Please, y'all, make sure you scream <laughs> WFLA, shout our names. We want to give you these beads. But I do have to say the energy, yeah. even though despite that it's freezing cold out here, let's not get it, <laughs> let's not get it twisted. I know, the I energy know is here. incredible out here. It is amazing. And a little bit later on, you're going to get a full tour of our brand new float. We're going to show you who all's on our float. And Deanne's going to give you a, a demonstration yeah. on how <laughs> we're going to throw beads. So we're having a great time out here, and we're going to toss it back to you guys. I hope you guys are having a fun time, too. Well, it looks like they're having a lot of fun out there. And you know, Chris uh, Chris and I know each other. We've known each other for more than 20 years, Chris really? Martinez. Yep. And actually, we worked together in our last job 
he came down here and then I followed him a couple of weeks after that. He's got that kind of magnetic personality. Yep. Yep. So he's a I local can understand. from this he area. He is a uh -huh. local. His sister is a good friend of mine. Yep. The and his sister is a good family. friend of mine as well. See, the world See? is small. There's I'm glad you came back. I'm so happy. I am more glad to be back. I got to tell you, it's a rough world out there. Don't leave. Stay <laughs> right here in the Tampa Bay, Bay area. Is where it's at. You know, somebody else who's a local who could tell you all about it is our very own Eagle Eight pilot. Well, he's not the pilot. He's the reporter. Mm. Paul Lamison. He's with our pilot, Roy Harkness, there high above the parade route in Eagle Eight HD, having a great time and watching. You missed a crew of Gasparilla invade Tampa Bay. The route was changed a little bit, uh -huh. but Paul can give us a bird's eye view. Hey guys, welcome Jeff and hey Jen, it's always good to see you fellow Lakeland people in the house. Hey, I have the great, I have the best seat in the house. You see it right here. There's downtown Tampa, there's South Tampa. Now let's roll some video of this morning. I was over the manatee watch. We went up with Zoo Tampa along with Ye Mystic Crew to look for manatees in the path of the flotilla. So what we do, we found some and we make sure they just stay out of the way of everything. And then here comes all the fun, the pirate ship, Ye Mystic Crew aboard Jose Gasparilla as they made their way from the port of Tampa this time around Harbor Island. They then split Davis Island and Harbor Island right down Seddon Channel and there were people lining it and it was beautiful. The sky was blue, a little bit windy, a little bit pirate weather, but it was great nonetheless. And so it was a beautiful day. Now, if you come back out live, look, I, I'm almost in a time machine for you guys. The parade has started where I am. It's not to you guys yet, but look at this. There's the parade started. You see people marching on the street. The beads are going to be flying. So I'll get out of my time machine and send it back to you guys in our happy Gasparilla. Back to you, Jen. Back to you, Jeff. Enjoy your day. Paul is going to have some really great views for us all day today, and I can't wait to see those. You know, something I love about the Tampa Bay area is that, you know, Tampa has got its own real tradition in this. Oh, yeah. Of course, the Bucks are built off of this tradition as well. And, you know, it's its own microchasm. And it really, you can really feel the cultural appeal when you when you come back here again. You, you really do appreciate uh, all the things that Tampa has to offer. It really is its own place with its own identity, it and its is. own culture. Yeah, It is making its mark, too. More and more people have flocked to this area in the past two years. Many of them are having their very yeah. first Gasparilla Parade experience. And we have much more parade coverage coming your way. Stay with us. You are watching the Seminole Hard Rock Gasparilla Pirate Fest Parade of Pirates. Folks, JB Buno here with you live. We're going to be ending our stream on YouTube for some breaking news coming up on WFLA Now. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back. This is News Channel 8's exclusive live coverage of the 2022 Seminole Hard Rock Gasparilla Fest Parade of Pirates. You having fun so far, Jeff Paradell? I am having fun, but things have changed a little, right? The the invasion, the route of the invasion changed because of the wind, the That's small right. craft advisory. 
You said that there are usually dozens or hundreds of boats that are lined there up. There are it's just a lot of boats normally out here, people wanting to watch from the water. Right. Today's not the day for uh, that. It's calm here, but if, to get here, you have to go through really rough seas. So a lot has changed this year because of because of how cold it is out there. But we're there. just so happy to have the parade again because it hit pause. It doesn't do that very often. Only a couple of times in its history yep. has the parade been postponed or canceled. And so it's wonderful to have all of these people back here now today enjoying a beautiful sunny Florida day, just chilly. Yeah, and people are extra jazzed today because they've had to wait two, yes. two years to make this happen. A lot of pent up pirate energy <laughs> yeah, in the I'm community. I'm <laughs> sure. So let me tell you a little bit about what I know. There are more than 50 crews participating in this year's Parade of Pirates and over 100 floats. But as you can imagine, it takes months of work and preparation uh, to build and maintain these floats. It sure does. And yeah. our own Gasparilla reporter, Jeff Patterson, he has worked in this community for many, many years, mm -hmm. decades. He has a look at all the work that goes behind the, goes on behind the scenes to make all of this happen. These floats are almost ready to roll for the parade. It takes a lot of effort to get them ready for parade day. This is our uh, steps towing float headquarters. In a warehouse in Tampa, the work starts days, months in advance to get floats ready for parade day. We store approximately 38 floats in, in the multiple buildings we have here on property. Steps towing is a major part of the parade because they pull many of the floats. Yeah, that's the, probably the, uh, the, the four most stressful weeks of our lives. Because in the middle of parade chaos, they have to worry about safety. Safety, that's number one, it's because you have, you have people coming walking in front of you walking down the side of you. The parade route gets very narrow in some areas. The turns are tight, so you're, you're constantly, your head's on a swivel. For the crews, the work to prepare begins long before the start of the parade. We start when the last parade happens, which is usually in April. And then in the summertime, we try to clean up, check what we have to do, make our list for repairs. And that takes a long time because we have to find people to come out and help us repair. Crew members load everything from beads to beverages in advance, and they work to get each float just right. Making sure that we have enough supplies, hand sanitizer, uh, paper towels, and so forth. And that takes a little bit of coordination. Many of the floats are built from the ground up by Aaron Winders and his team. He just finished revitalizing this float from Ye Loyal Crew of Grace O'Malley. We took all the stone work on the entire float and we redid all the, the texturing on it, the, uh, some of the grout lines, and then we repainted it to actually look like a real castle block. He has electricians to work on generators to power the music and lights, painters to make the floats look just right. They also come up with each float's design. It's an intense process. I want to learn about the crew. I want to learn what, what are you doing in Tampa Bay? What are you doing charity-wise? What are you trying to portray to the community? So what a ton of work that goes into yeah. these floats and the crews all responsible for, you know, making sure their float each year is ready to roll. Volunteers make that all happen. I mean, it really makes you appreciate what a community effort this is here. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of camaraderie. There's a lot of money that goes to charity and it really does build the identity of the uh, Tampa Bay area. Certainly. You know, uh, because we had a year off last year, I understand that there was time to refurbish a, right. lot of, a lot of these floats and I can't wait to actually see them. I'm really excited to see them because I know so fun. people put a lot of time and, and effort really into it. Uh, speaking of floats, I'm going to toss to Avery Cotton now, our morning anchor, who is live on our new float, our new news WFLA channel. WFLA float. float. Yep. Hey, Jen and Jeff. Yeah, we are about to start moving. I can see everybody moving up ahead towards you guys. We'll be there very shortly. But hey, look at our brand new float, our WFLA News Channel 8 float. The first time that we have had a float in Gasparilla since we have started broadcasting in 1955. And the name of the float is called Faces of Age. One of the faces here on, that's going to be on our float rolling, Megan Gannon, I know you're excited. Oh, I'm so excited. First Gasparilla ever, and I get to be on a float. So looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. She's not here getting us all pumped up, doing her dances. You know she's famous for her, her dances that we often turn into gifts. So there she goes. <laughs> so we're having a good time. Our very first float. It is amazing. So if you see us out here, everybody, make sure you yell. We'll throw you some beads. Having a good time. I'll send it back to you, Jen and Jeff. 
You know, next year, I want to be on this. All right? I it want, looks like I, a great I time. The, I, not that I don't love it here, because I do love it here. This is a pretty good vantage but point. I would love to check out the floats. I want to be a part of it next year in the middle of all of it. <laughs> uh, you are watching the uh, Seminole Hard Rock Gasparilla Pirate Fest Parade of Pirates. We'll be back with more coverage in just a couple of minutes. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to News Channel 8's exclusive coverage of the 2022 Seminole Hard Rock Gasparilla Fest Parade of Pirates. And we are just moments away from getting started. Tampa Police Department's right over there. They're going back and forth. Yeah, so either I did something it. very wrong or they're just <laughs> leading the parade no, and making sure everyone's safe. They're clearing the parade route and uh, show, sh doing a little showing off they for the crowd. They are showing off for our cameras. They yeah. are definitely uh -huh. expert level motorcycle riders at this play. Right now, yeah, so they're doing a great job. Oh, nice there's a lot of them right here. Here they go. Here they come. There they go. TPD's finest. Uh, you know, Chris Martinez, our morning co-anchor that we were talking about earlier, he is hanging out with some of our colleagues on the News Channel Eight float. They're going to be throwing beads to the crowd. It's our very first year having a float. I saw the float go by early. Uh huh. You like Nobody it? Nobody was on. It's looking sharp, I gotta tell you. So, but where are my beats? Oh, you're gonna get more beats. I want. I don't want to be able to walk home. I want there to be so much weight that I can't walk my beats home. It's gonna happen. Let's check in with Chris and see how things are going on the float. Hey, Jen and Jeff, I can tell you the parade it has started moving, so we expect to be heading in your direction here pretty soon. But check out who I'm with right now. We are on our brand new WFLA float called Faces of Eight, and who we have: Shannon Bankin, Evan Donovan, and Amanda Holly. Now, all three. Gasparilla veterans, but guys, this is the first time anybody's been on a float right. during the parade. Yeah, we I walked it a couple years ago. We had our Max Vendor 8 vehicle. That was so fun. It's a little chillier this year, but there's just as many people, and I'm really excited. Now, Evan is all set. You got your Captain Pirate yeah, hat on. Ready to go. Yeah, it's, I, I thought we'd be showing more of this, but it's pretty cold out here. <laughs> Normally, I'm doing one of these house parties, but it's cool to be on the float today. And Shannon, what's your thoughts being this is the first year we've ever had a float? It is the first year we've ever had a float. This is a different vantage point to see the parade and it's so nice to be able to be a part of this with the community. We're going to have so much fun today, guys, and we have a ton of beads to hand out, so make sure you're yelling for us as we head your way. For now, Jeff Jen, I'll send it back to you. All right, thank you, Chris. Looks like they're having a great time on that float, Jen. So nice to uh, see them out there having a good time. Before we go to break, there's something we want to do right now. We'd like to pay tribute to two of our longtime News Channel 8 Gasparilla family members who have recently passed away. Such special people to us here. Vita Jo Martin was the longtime producer of the Gasparilla Parade during her 34-year career at WFLA and was truly 
a creative and inspirational person. Uh, she was one of the first people to ever give me a job here at uh, Channel 8. She means a lot to me. Yeah. Rick Flanagan was an integral part of the News Channel 8 family as well for the last 37 years. As a master control operator, he loved working the parade in a variety of jobs and made a mean pot of coffee. We miss them both. Mm. Welcome back. You are watching News Channel 8's exclusive live coverage of the 2022 Seminole Hard Rock Gasparilla Pirate Fest Parade of Pirates. It's such a beautiful day out here. And you know, this year, Ye Mystic Crew of Gasparilla is commemorating the 200th anniversary of the death of Pirate Jose Gaspar. I love the fact that this parade, which is the third biggest in the United in the States, US that this is based on what may or may not be true, right? The myth of a pirate that may or may not have existed, depending upon the way you feel about it. <laughs> uh, and yet it is such a huge celebration it that goes back so here. far in Tampa's history. It's quite the tale, and it's the inspiration for the current parade uh, and the celebration that we're enjoying today. Gasparilla reporter Jeff Patterson explores the complicated question of Jose Gaspar's origins. Is he myth? Is he legend? Or is there any truth to the stories of the pirate Jose Gaspar? Those stories became the basis of the Gasparilla celebration. Since 1904, the partying pirates of Ye Mystic Crew have fought to capture the city of Tampa. All in good fun, of course, but it all began with a story. The story of Jose Gaspar is really uh, an excuse or a, a reason to have formed Ye Mystic Crew of Gasparilla in 1904 to create what we now know as the Gasparilla Parade and the overall Gasparilla celebration. Rodney Kite Powell is the curator of history at the Tampa Bay History Center and a legitimate expert on Tampa history, Florida history, and the history, myth, and legend of Jose Gaspar. There are a lot of histories of Jose Gaspar, and it should be cautioned that uh, there's no evidence for sure that there actually was a pirate on the Florida coast named Jose Gaspar during this time period. Um, but there doesn't mean there's not a lot of information about him that people have written. For years, historians have worked to confirm the identity of the Spanish pirate named Jose Gaspar. And despite extensive period records from the Spanish, they can't. Then again, no one has been able to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt he didn't exist. There were myths about a, a pirate named Gaspar or Gasparilla or Gasparilla, all kinds of different names. The myths turned into books and stories. There's a lot of symbolism that's tied in with, with Jose Gaspar's dates of piracy and his date of death. 
Much of the story was written by Tampa Tribune publisher Edwin Lambright, who helped organize the original Gasparilla celebration. Lambright wrote a book, published by ye Mr. Crew of Gasparilla, and the legend was born. And it's in that book that the, the full story of Gaspar's life and death are, are told. And it was Lambright who has identified the date of death uh, at December of 1821. The death in 1821 is significant and symbolic. Gaspar and his crew were going to go after one last prize. It turns out that that prize was a U.S. Navy ship. And so rather than being boarded and likely executed by, uh, by the U.S. Navy, he decided to take his own life. According to the story, that was in 1821. So 1821 was also the, the year that Florida became a U.S. territory, uh, transferred from Spain to Florida. And for Lambright, the death of a Spanish sailor at the hands of the U.S. Navy meant something. And so much like Jose Gaspar being the Spanish pirate who kind of relinquished control of Florida to the U.S. Navy, uh, the, Florida itself went from Spanish to American in this case. And that is the story of the legend of Jose Gaspar and why this year ye mystic crew of Gasparilla is remembering the 200th anniversary of the death of the mythical pirate. Ooh, I don't know. Some people, those might be fighting words for some people. I know. Hey, listen, we could debate Jose Gaspar real or not all day long, but there are some big doings on the parade route right now. Our pirate on the street, Lee Span, is standing by and she can see the Budweiser Clydesdales coming her way. Lee, OMG, this yes. parade is getting started. The majestic animals that they are. And we're going to talk with one of the hitch team members because I've always wondered how these horses get from place to place. So we're going to talk to him about that. But don't they look amazing and majestic as they come down Bayshore Boulevard uh, I, I believe that you know, they enjoy a, a few beverages what? brought b brought on by the uh, by the Budweiser's <laughs> Budweiser Clydesdales as well, and of course they have the legendary Dalmatian riding along the top. Oh, so, yay. Uh, so coming up is going to be Grant Johnson with the Hitch Team, and uh, he, and again that's his whole job is to get these horses to where they're supposed to go, and they are not small. <laughs> so yeah. here, here comes Grant now. All right, Grant, these horses are so beautiful. That they are, they're pretty majestic. And how long have you been working with them? I've been able to work with Budweiser Clydesdales for the past three years. Okay, so you're on the hitch team. I want to know how they get from place to place. Well, we have uh, three tractor trailers. So the first truck has four horses, second truck has six horses, and the third truck has all the wagon and harness and all the materials that we need to do to do our job. Well, we know that we love them here at Gasparilla. So how much fun is it to be Oh, it's awesome. This is a great buildup. Uh, we go to Barnegar in a couple weeks. So Gas Gasparilla with all the people is a great place for us. Uh, the audience, the spectators are just amazing and it's fun. Great time. And how did the horses react to all of the to all of the screaming and things like that? You know, they're used to it. This is their job. <laughs> uh, being around the audience and the flags and the noise, they get used to it. They're well taken care of. So this is just next second nature. This is their job. Well, we are so happy to have them back. Go enjoy the rest we'll of the do. parade. Thanks so much, Grant. Right, have a great one. So yes, we enjoy having uh, the Budweiser Clyde sales here and uh, they'll be off to Mardi Gras getting more beads. Back to you. That sounds so good and they are, I mean majestic is the perfect word for them. They are absolutely They are beautiful. Animals. They are huge up close. <laughs> they they, are. You know, they were brought here in the mid 1800s and they're really busy. It says here that they attend more than 500 parades. It's amazing. Festivals and state fairs. Not each one, but it's, in combination. It's amazing. I'm so glad that they came by here. I'm also so glad that D.N. King, our morning traffic reporter, is standing by for us on the WFLA float, having a good time there. D.N. Hey, Jen and Jeff. So we have been having such an amazing time on our float, but we got to get to the beads, right? That's why a lot of people come out to Gasparilla. They want to go home with a whole bunch of beads. And guess who has the best beads in Gasparilla? Channel A, right? So here's a look at all of our beads. And I'm actually going to kind of demonstrate how to throw a bead. Now, prior to this, I was actually told by Ye Mystic Crew, there's a proper way to throw a bead. There's a proper way, right? So you're supposed to take two fingers, put them underneath the beads, and you toss. There we go. That's how you do it. Now, that's how you missed it. Crew says how to do it. This is how I say how to do it. You grab them things and you say, let's go overhead. Hey! 
<laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. Here's another one. Here's another one. I'm a little sore. Y'all, hopefully this, this works out. Y'all ready? Oh, oh. <laughs> Don't talk to bees like that. <laughs> Don't talk to bees like that. A lot of fun though, hey, more than likely, just just have some fun with it. Toss the beads, catch the beads most importantly. We're gonna be giving out all of these beads throughout the parade and it is just so much fun, so exciting. So I'm gonna send it back over to you all. Wait, let, let me send you some beads, Jen. <laughs> Thanks, Deanne. Looking out for me with the beads. I appreciate it. Yeah, I can't wait to get some of those beads. And you know, the parade the parade is almost to us, so this is really ramping up. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes with more coverage of the Seminole Hard Rock Gasparilla Pirate Fest Parade of Pirates. Welcome back and thanks for watching News Channel 8's exclusive coverage of the 2022 Seminole Hard Rock Gasparilla Fest Parade of Pirates. It's getting loud. It is getting us. loud. The parade yep. is almost here right now. The Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office motor unit is behind us. We can see the rest of the SUVs lined up, ready to clear the parade route. They're tossing beads So already. they're this close. They're this, this close. close. In right. fact, if you really want to know how close they are, let's send it up to the sky to Eagle 8 and Paul Lamison, who already has a view of the parade route. Hey, Paul. Hey, guys. Look, it's the News Channel 8 float. There they are. I don't know if they can hear me, but they should be waving. Oh, look, they're waving. Look at them. Hey, Channel 8, look at that. First time we've had a float in the parade. And let me tell you, I've ridden on a couple floats, and it's a blast. You get a whole different perspective. Now, what they're doing here and what they shouldn't do Nobody's throwing beads yet. You're not allowed to throw beads till you get to Bay to Bay Boulevard. So that's coming up, but there's the Channel 8 float. It's a whole heck of a lot of fun. So you know what, guys? I'm going to switch onto my camera and say, hey, look at my shirt. I'm all dressed as a pirate as well. So Jen, Jeff, I'm going to throw it back to you. And I'm enjoying the parade from up here, and I'm enjoying you guys talking about it. So back to you guys. All right, thank you, Paul. We're going to keep checking in with Paul for more updates. Vantage point way up there looking at the news channel 8 float and by the way it is really ramping up the people are getting really excited it was quiet but you know the level the decibels are really starting are to go up there. increasing yeah. for sure our pirate on the street Lee Span is standing by with some of those excited people as we speak hey Lee the, yeah, hello and Sheriff uh, Chronister just tossed these beads to me Perfect. he's right on the other side Perfect. so this is a pretty good one look how pretty they look oh, like this nice. those are so, big 
you know, as Jeff, you'll learn that you'll be like, oh, these are the good ones okay. when you talk. So well, let's yeah, keep on hand them over. Here. It's true. Give them to yeah, me. Yeah, I'll send them your yeah, way, Jeff. All right, you. so you guys about ready for the parade to start? Yeah! So what time did y'all get out here today? What? What time did you get out here today? Uh, 10, 11 o'clock. Yeah. Yes. And, the, uh, and so now the, the parade has stepped off. The, the, the floats are just down the street. And I do always wonder, like, what kind of grades in school you get to be a pirate? Do you guys know? Oh, goodness, what? High seas. Oh, boy. So you knew that was going to be a joke. I, I thought that was serious. <laughs> no. It's not no, a very good I setup, can, if you can already I tell can it's a tell. joke, right? I know Lee, the, too. Uh, coming well. up in just, in just a little bit, we'll be talking to the community hero. You guys are going to definitely want to hear uh, about what what uh, the Bubba organization means. Beads oh. are coming. Beads are, beads are being excited. thrown. Beads are being thrown at us. to get some good ones. Go. Thank you there very you much, of sir. Course, course. I appreciate it. Lee, thank you so much. And we hope you all stick around. Yeah, it's getting real now, right? We're going to be back in just a moment with more Seminole Hard Rock Gasparilla Pirate Fest Parade of Pirates. Stay with us. Jennifer Lee alongside Jeff Maradelli, our brand new chief meteorologist at News Channel 8. Jeff, I got to tell you, we have some breaking news. I can't news. believe it. I'm floored. Breaking news. NBC News is reporting that Tom Brady, yeah. and, excuse me, NBC Sports is reporting that Tom Brady is going to announce his, his retirement. retirement. That's all I know wow. at this point. Smarter people than me are feeding this information to me in my ear. But it's a huge development today. I, I'm, I'm hearing hearts drop yeah. right now. Thank goodness uh, there's a parade today to keep our, our spirits high. But that is going to be a tremendous development. But he has made things so exciting over the past couple of years in the Tampa Bay area. It's been inspiring. We, we've had some great seasons. So NBC Sports, again, reporting that Tom Brady is going to announce his retirement from the NFL. He's had an amazing career. We will certainly yeah. keep you updated. Our sports team is on the case as we speak. Meantime, we have a parade to cover here, my friend. We do. In fact, we have our own parade float, News Channel 8. I'm excited about it. All right. Yeah. I'm going to send it on out to Avery, Chris, and Deanne right now for more on what's going on where they are. 
Hey, Jen and Jeff, we are making our way slowly but surely in your direction. But I got to tell you what, this is the first year WFLA has ever had a float and there is so much excitement. Yes, we are so excited. Be looking for us because we're going to be throwing beads your way. We are loaded down with beads. You're going to see everyone from the morning team here. Leah, I know she's on the street as our pirate right now. <laughs> Missing her, but we'll catch up with her in just a minute. And Deanne is becoming an expert at throwing beads. <laughs> Listen, I've learned how to properly throw it. Then I realized there's just then there's the Deanne way, and you know, that means... As with everything as, in life. Correct, you know, you just throw the beads and you hope it gets to the person. That's that's the technique here. And, and look at how many we got left here. We got a lot of beads to hand out, so hopefully we'll be throwing some your way as we head down the, down the route here. Hey, Jen and Jeff, we're going to send it back to you. All right, lots of fun on this parade, and I understand... We're getting to the very beginning now, oh, right? It's, it's on. It's, it's on. happening okay. now. In fact, you missed a crew of Gasparilla flag bearers that start, formally start each one of these parades. We can see them coming down the parade route as we speak. You see their flags. You see the excitement on their faces. Leading the flag bearers are two black horses pulling a case on carrying the tomb uh -oh. of Jose Gaspar. Okay. December 2021 marks the 200th anniversary of his death. Do you know right. about the legend? I, you know, I do. So I'll, let me read you what I have here, but I okay. understand that uh, he was being attacked and he did not want to fall by the by their sword. So he ended up strapping a, a chain around his neck and ended up going to the bottom of the oh, wall. Goodness. But that's what I heard. So according to legend, Gaspar was not victorious in his last battle. An American pirate hunting vessel, the USS Enterprise, disguised itself as a British merchant ship and took Gaspar by surprise. When it was clear that the American forces would win the battle, Gaspar vowed he would not be taken alive, that's what I was just talking about, to face a hangman's noose. So he wound the anchor chain around himself, threw himself and the anchor into the sea, crying that Gasparilla dies by his own hand, not by the enemies. And there's the caisson right there, you see it. All right. Jose Gaspar, dead 200 years, wow. friends. There is much more Seminole Hard Rock Gasparilla Pirate Fest parade of pirates to come. We hope you stay with us. It's getting good. You are watching News Channel 8's exclusive live coverage of the 2022 Seminole Hard Rock Gasparilla Fest Parade of Pirates. Welcome back to you. I'm Jennifer Lee. 
alongside Jeff Berardelli, our chief meteorologist, brand new to the team. And I'm so happy you get to do this with us. This is a fun day to experience a parade. It is a fun day. Now, I've experienced some of them before. I, I, I could have ordered weather that was maybe 10 or 20 degrees. Warmer. Just a little, a little warmer. warmer. Maybe a little less wind, but that sun really does help to warm you up. It Thank goodness. It certainly does. You know what else warms me up? What? The great personality of our pirate on the street, Lee Spann, who is in the thick of things. Hey, Lee. I am not only in the thick of things, I am with the mayor, Jane Castor, who did not give up the key and allowed us to be invaded by pirates. I know. You know, it's the 200th birthday, so we got to give these old pirates a break, right? So we're going to go ahead and let them hold this party, which is a signature event for our community. And look how much fun everybody's having out here today. It's a perfect day. It is really perfect. I know we didn't get to have it last year, and then it was going to be cold and windy, and right. that didn't yeah, stop these pirates. Not at all. Didn't stop the pirates, and certainly didn't stop the community. We've got a lot of revelers out here. It's a lot of fun. And what are you what, what are you seeing as you walk down the street? I, what I'm seeing are a lot of people that really wanted to get back to this signature event, what defines our city. And it's just an event that brings everybody, the entire community, together. So it's wonderful. And it really helps that pirates wear coats and hats and boots, <laughs> right? Yes, and, but some of the, the women that are walking around, I think they call them winches, that they're a little scantily clad. They may be a little chilly. Maybe they're warming from the inside out by a little grog on the inside. <laughs> All right, well, okay. Mayor, have fun. Enjoy this. It's two years in the making, and you're doing a great job. Well, thank you thank so you. much. We appreciate it. Arr. Arr. <laughs> wow. Only the mayor of Tampa can call out the pirate wenches in the crowd who are uh, less dressed than the rest. <laughs> Listen, this is a, a city that knows how to have fun. Oh, dude, no I mean, question about that's it. That's the one thing about this area is that people are here to enjoy their lives, and boy, do they enjoy their lives. And we, we see it all the time in our community, and uh, we see it especially today. You know, we have a really special guest with Lee right now. We want to send it right back all out right. to her. She is here with our community hero. Lee, tell us more about him. Yeah, I'm here with Jalen Robinson. And uh, again, some of the dignitaries, like the mayor, come first in the parade, but also our community heroes. I'm going to have Jalen explain what the Bubba Organization Alliance is. Well, in simple terms, Bubba, we just do everything about men and boys. We do tutoring, mentoring, events, programs, anything that involves the improving of lives of men and boys and color, that's what we do. And what does Bubba stand for? Brothers, Bubba stands for Brothers United Building Brothers Alliance. And so all year long, what does it mean to be able to, to bring another generation up along with you? And you know what? When we talk about mentorship, a lot of times we talk about what we can do for the youth. But what I've found is that they do so much more for us. So it's really like a give and take kind of relationship. So just like we're building them up, they're building us up. So hand in hand. Well, enjoy being the community hero. Enjoy this parade. Enjoy this weather. Enjoy being a pirate today, Jay. Thank you. Thank you, Tampa Bay. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you. Have fun out there. No, Jalen, we're happy for you to be here. What a great community here and a great for organization. Sure. And we have a, a lot of great community heroes, and a lot of them are part of this parade. So many of the crews are giving back to the community. That's right. Yeah, it's not just sure. about having a social club or a big event to participate in once a year. It's about giving back right. year after year. You've heard us mention multiple times this is the Seminole Hard Rock right. Gasparilla Pirate Fest Parade of Pirates, the Hard Rock Casino Float is coming this way. I can see, oh, I see it, it coming yep. this way, and it looks good, guys. The the thick of the parade is making its yeah. way to us. You know, it was they did step off about 20 minutes late because they had a little bit of trouble with, with the, the wind. weather. And docking, the wind. Docking, docking the ship. That's right. So that's why we're getting a little bit of a slow start. But as I mentioned, Hard Rock Casino, the folks are here, yep. and Lee is standing by with our title sponsor. All right, so this is it. This is the title sponsor, and Darian Cobb with the Seminole Hard Rock is here, and we're making some noise. Darian, what is it like to be back after a year off? We are so excited to be back. We're back and better than ever, and this year we have 45,000 beats that we're throwing out.
So we're, we, yeah, we really appreciate the fact that you guys are our title sponsor every year, but what do you have coming up at your facility? We've got tons of live entertainment shows, and one of the biggest ones that we have coming up is Zed, a pool party on February 20th, so hopefully it's a beautiful day just like today. All right, Dario, you go catch up with the float. Enjoy today. It is just so much fun, and congratulations on being the title sponsor. Thank you so much. Have a great day. So apparently they have 45,000 beats. 45,000 beats! That they will, they will throw that in this be parade going. today. It'll be incredible. Yep. And that's really, let's be honest, that's what these people that's are here for. About. The crowd, upwards of 200,000 people come yep. to this parade each year, all screaming the same thing. Beats, beats, beats. They want, beats. Beats. They want the beats. But thanks, special thanks to them. 11th year involved in Gasparilla, Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino, our title sponsor. Next up, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think we need to circle back to this big breaking news of the day. NBC Sports reporting that Tom Brady is going to announce his retirement. Just an enormous announcement for this area, for the Buccaneers. Uh, I mean, he made them the uh, Super Bowl champs yeah, last it's year. It's been so. an exciting couple of years around here. And I think a lot of people, I don't know, I think people were split on whether he'd retire or not. I thought there was a chance he might stay and ride it out for another year, but you know he's going to spend some time with his family now. He is indeed. Uh, we want to go spend a little more time with Lee Spann, who is in the thick of things down with the Buccaneers as we speak. Hey, Lee. Hello, hello y'all. So this is the Grand Marshal. It is the Buccaneers, because boy, have they just really set this place on this entire area on fire and I'm here uh, with one of the Glacier family uh, members so tell me about what it's like as the, the, with, the with the Buccaneers having such great season. Oh, we've we've uh, had an incredible season we're so thankful to all the fans um, and we just Thank really you. enjoy lifting up the community and everybody's having such a great time today so we're so excited to be here. All right so now let's talk a little bit about what the Glazer family does for our community. Yes they brought us the Buccaneers but they're also helping out. How about the vision for so for the Vision Foundation, what we do is we've given away over 100,000 eye exams and 20,000 free eyeglasses to all kids who need them. We just uh, feel it's very important and a real passion point for my family. So it's, it's amazing that you guys do so much for our community. We're, we're proud that you're a, a, a part of our, of our area. We're excited that the Buccaneers had another amazing season. And uh, thanks for being the Grand Marshal for today. Oh, I'm so happy to do it. We're having a great time today. Well, go enjoy. Darcy Glazer Kasowitz there, the Grand Marshal of this parade on such a gorgeous sunny Florida day. It's chilly, but that doesn't matter today, Jeff Baradelli, because hearts are warm and people are happy. You know what's up next? What's up next? The Navy Band Southeast. The band is under the direction of Lieutenant Clinton McClanahan and the drum major, musician, second class, Danielle Wunderlich. Okay. So we're gonna watch them as they come down the parade route. Uh, yep. We're looking at the Bucks float as we speak. Buccaneers. Which, which I love, by the way. It's such a great float. It really is. Yeah, the Bucks drummers are here. Do you see them? Look at them. They play during every game. They like to rock the house. And I mean, this has got to be an exciting year for them. It's got to be exciting for the fans to see them right now. You can see how crazy the people got as soon as the Bucks of pulled course. up. Yeah, of course, of course. Sure. I kept hoping that maybe I would see Tom and Giselle on the float, yeah, right. but I think they're yeah. hanging out at the house yeah. right now. <laughs> We're in a much warmer place than we are. They that's, are that's indeed. Sure. But you know, Lee made a good point. It's perfect that Pirates wear coats and scarves as part of their getup, so it's yeah, if, not listen, a problem if you, here. If you're, going to be a, if you're going to be a pirate, you need to be prepared for all kinds of conditions. You indeed, never know what you're going to encounter. Indeed. And, okay, so now, yeah. word on the street, as the float goes by us, look at the good time they're having. Yep. There is more parade coming, but this is a perfect time for us to take a break and come back with the Navy band. So don't go away. You're watching the Seminole Hard Rock Gasparilla Pirate Fest Parade of Pirates. We'll be right back.
Welcome back, everyone, to the Seminole Hard Rock Gasparilla Pirate Fest Parade of Pirates. Things are really starting to ramp up. People are getting really excited in the crowd. The Bucks just went by. They are already throwing some beads, so the energy level is high. And as promised, as advertised, the Navy Band Southeast is coming down the parade route as we speak, and they're looking sharp. So good. Now, as I mentioned before, the band is under the direction of Lieutenant Clint McClanahan, the drum major, musician, second class, Danielle Wonderlich. And they were established in 1995. And apparently there are 45 Navy musicians that are performing during the day today. They're going to be playing a selection of patriotic songs and also anchors away. That's awesome. Let's listen in for a second. away right there with the Navy Band Southeast. Looking sharp, fellas and ladies. We appreciate you. Thank you for your service. And not too far behind is the crew of Shamrock. Just behind him. You can kind of see him in the distance right there. Yeah. Making their way as we speak. All right, the there we go. The crew of Shamrock. This is one of, you mentioned before that they had an opportunity to refurbish some of their floats. Right. This is a float redesigned in 2020 to resemble a 16th century Celtic castle built by crew members and i believe this is the crew uh, hopefully my smart producers can tell me the shamrock crew has some other crew another crew with them yes showing the collaboration also riding are members of the crew of seven celtic nations that's right yep. so showing that pirates can get along they can, they get can along. collaborate when necessary so it's nice to see that i like to see it and i really like their float it is very well decorated you know lee span is standing by on the parade route um i can't see you lee but i know you're out there i'm, I'm actually right here okay. and i'm with bruce weiner who's with the, the Shamrock, and we just wanted to really thank you guys for being a, to help out another one of your crew. Thank you. You know, crews are all about stewardship. It's not just about being social. And with me is Diane Jimenez. Hi, from how are the crew, you? The crew of Seven Celtic Nation, and uh, they reached out to us in need, and uh, as a crew that just doesn't serve the community, but also our crew family, uh, we agreed to go ahead and do it. All right, thank you guys. Enjoy and big thank on, a, on the so friends' much. float. Absolutely, thank you. Have a great one. Yes, it's all about the community, crew to crew, community to community. I love right. it. I we love are, we to are getting see it. beads, by the way. This That's is great. Right. I, I got my first set of beads right now. Sweet. You're official now, Jeff Baradelli. And Next up, this is a good one. Yep, the unsinkable crew of Molly Brown. And I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are thinking that sounds familiar that because it's does. from the Titanic. It's from the Titanic. These are our friends. The crew's name honors the Titanic's most famous survivor, Molly Brown. Now, if you notice the float, it depicts the sinking Titanic ship complete yep. with four smokestacks, two masts, and lifeboats on each side of the float. An iceberg is on the front of the float, you know, just for good measure. Now, the real Titanic, not this, sank back in 1912, and Molly Brown played a role in saving many people's lives, which she is, of course, known for. Uh, members are in great costumes, period costumes, reminiscent of the time. Uh, back then in 1912 and from the movie Titanic, which we have all seen. And I, I'm just saying, I'm just going to give a shout out to Danny, my spin instructor, who was just on the Molly Brown float. So happy to see her there. If she watches back uh, with her kids later, they'll think she's the coolest mom ever. Now we're looking at the grand crew of D. Libertari. Libertalia. Libertalia. Yes. Okay. This is a crew with a diverse point of view, a multicultural crew for men and women from both sides of Tampa Bay with an emphasis on family and community involvement. Members are dressed in red, they're dressed in black and white pirate costumes. We have a 40 gallon float galleon decked out with uh, all the crew colors. You can see them right there. They look good. They yeah. got, a, got some good music going there, too. The crew awards scholarships to Hillsborough County through Gasparilla Treasure Chest Scholarship Awards and the Hillsborough Education Foundation. Apparently, they have contributed over $900,000 in scholarship money, and over 300 Love scholarships it. have been given to children in the Tampa Bay area. Love to hear it. Hey, take a look at this, Jeff Baradelli. Our very own Tampa Bay Lightning Thunderbug at the helm as we speak. 
looking good in the lightning blue. It is the perfect temperature for the <laughs> lightning. I mean, they must love the weather today for Gasparilla. And can you tell what the float is meant to depict? Is it a Zamboni? It is, in fact, a Zamboni with hockey pucks right on the front. I like it. Of course, back-to-back uh, -back Stanley Cup champions. Go Bulls. The NHL All-Star Game is Saturday, February 5th in Las Vegas, Nevada. Defenseman Victor Hedman and goalie Andre Vasilevsky representing the Lightning. Lightning, so it will be a good time. Hey, Thunderbug. All right. Looking good, Lightning. Oh, yeah. I like that costume. Okay, so is this iHeartMedia, our friends at iHeartMedia 93.3 WFLZ? Our friends over there at the radio station. This features Tampa Bay's number one hip music channel. You know, I, I used to listen to this radio station 20 years ago when I first looked here. This was, this was my radio station. 93.3 FLZ, uh, yeah. Uh, apparently they have a new, really funny morning show called The Joe Show, hosted by Joe, Ashley, and producer Jed. And they're waving at us. Don't they? They look like they're having a good time. Bundled up, having fun, throwing beads as it should be on Gasparilla this is really Pirate ramping Parade up. Day. The Outback Bowl float is coming our way now. Do you see what these guys look good? I see a ref in there. Arms up, field goal style. So the float represents a real Tampa Bay treasure, the annual New Year's College Bowl game at Raymond James Stadium, we're all familiar with, yes. featuring teams from the Big Ten and the Southeastern Conference. And the float features logos of this past game's teams, the Penn State Nittany Lions and the Arkansas Razorbacks. By the way, Arkansas won 24 and did you know that the Outback Bowl celebrated its Whoa, 36th anniversary this year? And we just got an Outback Bowl football. We'll show that off later. Living our best lives right now <laughs> up here in the lift, getting swag. It's funny, as you watch the parade, things are being thrown at us here in the booth. <laughs> and I love it. I love it. Oh, we got some more beads coming. Next some more up beads. is the crew of the Knights of St. John. This is a float restored. Uh, the float is a restored frontline American LaFrance fire truck that can be used as a caisson to honorable transport current and retired deceased firefighters during their funeral processions. Yep. These, these folks here handing out the beads right to our cameraman, too. I love it. Uh, the costumes are vintage turn of the century firefighters uniforms, if you were wondering about that. And you know what? Their charitable work includes the Hillsborough County Firefighters Charity that provides scholarships to the children of fallen firefighters, the local 2294 Firefighters Widows and Children's Fund, whose mission is to provide timely financial assistance and support to families of firefighters who suffer a death or major injury. So important work they do in addition to throwing beads. And you know, it was founded in, uh, in 2002 after they lost a beloved brother firefighter in the tragic events of 9-11, which, you know, really did start a lot of events around that time. And, uh, you know, we've turned tragedy into triumph in so many ways. So we really many have. ways. We yeah. appreciate all the work they do. Next up is going to be the Spirit of Cigar City crew. Oh, I love it. This float represents an old cigar factory from Ybor City. It showcases the architectural design of the cigar building, including the wrought iron railings. Don't they look good up there with all those pirates atop? And it incorporates the decorative columns from Bayshore. Um, this was founded back in 2006, and there were over 75 active members on this floor. I love to see it. You are watching the Seminole Hard Rock Gasparilla Pirate Fest Parade of Pirates, and there is much more parade to come. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
I love the music. I I'm love rocking, the music I'm rocking, too. I'm rocking, I'm rolling to this. Welcome back. You are watching the Seminole Hard Rock Gasparilla Pirate Fest Parade of Pirates. Jennifer Lee here alongside Jeff Baradelli, and we are loving what we're seeing. Check out this float. This is the Gaucho Association of Tampa. I like it. Those eyes are looking right at us. I, I really it's do. A, I feel seen yeah. right now. <laughs> well, that's that's good. I, that's what we all need. Yeah, the Gauchos were founded by the late Doug Vance, who passed away in 2016. And in 1960, as a social club, they currently have about 100 members who emulate the adventurous and romantic lifestyles of the South American Gauchos, or cowboys, who were known as the Pirates of Humphus. The president is Tim Rutherford, by the way. And uh, apparently the theme of this float is Gaucho's Bodega. Let's listen in. Oh, I love it. Oh, the beads are coming in hot now. Next up, can you see in the distance just over the edge of the Gauchos, we have the George M. Steinbrunner High School Band. I love a good high school marching band. Yep, approximately 100 members with the director Daniel Chip Wood and drum majors Tyler Snow and Savannah Alger. Yeah, the band captains Gigi Reagan and Madeline Gardner and the drum captain Victor Maldonado. We are so happy to see them here and I think they're going to play us a little something. Let's listen. Selection from the Pirates of the Caribbean, the Black Pearl. Perfect. The Marching Warrior Brigade received straight superior ratings at the District 7 Florida Bandmasters Association music performance. That was uh, held in early November at the Bloomingdale High School. This is the highest rating you can earn and receive, so they are very accomplished. Way to go, Steinbrenner. We love it. The crew of St. Bridget is coming up next. This float is designed to depict an Irish country tavern incorporating symbols of Bridget's life. Right flowers. I pretty much love everything about this. You know, uh, this is the float you want to be on. Absolutely. Uh, any Irish float is the kind of float that That's I want to. float for me. I want to be a part of that one. This crew is named for the Saint Bridget, born around 450 A.D. She ran her father's dairy and eventually became a Celtic mother goddess of Ireland. Second only to Saint Patrick in fame, she is legendary for being able to change water into wine. Now that is a skill you want. Being able to turn water into wine and routinely has performed miracles. Now that's another skill you want. Wow, to... I feel like I've heard this story somewhere awesome. before. <laughs> that is an all-female crew founded in 2003. We love you, crew of St. Bridget. Whoa. Next up, the cannons can mean only one thing, Jeff. What is that? What is that? What does it mean? The mystic crew of Gasparilla. Can you say in the house when you're out in the wild? I'm not really sure. They're here is the point. And, and they started this all, right? Is, is that right? They started all back in 1904? They did. You missed a crew. YMKG. You uh -huh. see it everywhere. Yes, you do. And they are integral to this parade. Their newest float that debuted in 2018 depicts an old Spanish fort and features four parapets with the cannoneers. Oh, that's loud. Here there that is loud. To shoot from. And a huge treasure chest on the front filled with Gaspar's gold. Those are blanks, right? I hope so. Yes. <laughs> Let's fingers cross. You are watching the Seminole Hard Rock Gasparilla Pirate Fest Parade of Pirates. We have more fun coming your way. Stay with us.
Welcome back. You are watching the Seminole Hard Rock Gasparilla Pirate Fest Parade of Pirate is Pirates. It is actually a beautiful day out here, Jeff. It is a beautiful day. The sun really helps. And, and you know, if you wore layers, you, you, you're you probably just fine. And people I've... don't seem to mind the, the cool weather at all. Oh, by the way, the Ye Mystic crew, they were loud. They, I mean, they, I you tried feel, to tell you, you before feel there are the cannons. vibration from their cannons. That's right. Yeah. You hear it. Mm -hmm. You sound. It's like a percussion. Yeah, all the things. Ew. So I learned something really cool today. Oh, wow. I understand that we launched our TV station we on did. Gasparilla. We did. And we've been a part of it all ever since. We absolutely yeah. have. It is such a big deal for us here yeah. at WFLA. We've done this for many decades, in fact, many years. Uh, the history of the parade goes all the way back to 1904. Did yes, you know I've that? heard. I, I've heard that. But I, I read that, that the evidence for Jose Gaspar was really from an inn on Gasparilla Island around uh, Boca Grande that the first written account of Jose Gaspar was found there back in the early 1900s. Really? Yes. That's, was, did, you, did they tell you there was going to be a quiz? How did, why did you study all this? Well, believe it or not, even before I came down here, like a month ago, I started researching did you really? Gasparilla. Well, yeah, I mean, I was it's told, kind of Jeff, you're going to host Gasparilla. And I'm like, well, I better find out some, some information about it. Of course, I've been here before. I lived here 20 years ago, but it's been quite a while. And uh, I don't have the best memory in the world anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do have a lot of fun facts. The first invasion by horseback with the first sea-based invasion coming in 1911. In 1954, Ye Mystic Crew commissioned the building of the world's only fully rigged pirate ship, the Jose Gasparilla II, which was christened during the crew's 50th anniversary. So, I mean, that's kind of why they fire the cannons. Oh, yeah. fire the cannons like they do at the Bucks. Oh, yes, exactly. I, that's I'm what starting I mean. to this piece all the... Yes, it all comes together. together. I yes, see. I mean, this, this whole city, <laughs> you know, so much of it, is based upon this legend. It's really amazing how it has grown and how it's become such an impactful and important part of the culture here, really. It certainly has. Now, last year we didn't have the parade. One of only a couple of times that the parade has been canceled or right. postponed. One of those other times, World War One. Yes. Yeah. And guess what was canceled during World War II and then resumed again in 1946. Well, this year there are plenty of people on the parade route. One of them is our very own pirate on the street, Lee Spann. She is down with the crowd. I'm guessing the weather's not bothering them at all. And now, I've got to be the Ye Mystic Crew uh, members have been walking through and, and firing up this crowd. Let's go talk to them. It has gotten a little rowdier since the beginning, by the way. So, <laughs> I bet. So you guys are one of the first people here. What's your name? Uh, my name is Jordan Sandoval. So how'd you, why'd you get here so early? Uh, we got here so early because we knew there was going to be a lot more people coming. And now, so I, I see that you got some, some arms shown here. Are you, are you cold out here? Uh, no. 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 So, so what's your name? Ryan Sandoval. And you have gotten a ton of beats. What is your, what is your strategy? I don't know. Just looking cute? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's a great strategy. Yeah, looking cute yeah. is pretty good. You, I think that's how you get all the beads. So thank you guys for coming out early and being willing to talk to us here along the along the parade route. And you know, I, you know, I um, I sometimes wonder where the where the pirates get their hooks. Oh boy, where do they get them? Oh Lee? no, well, another joke. From the second hand store. Uh, right? Okay. Well wait, I have one for you. Where's oh, she? I can't wait. Rod Carter texted me this because he's watching on the live stream on WFLA.com and he said, how do pirates keep warm? You ready? Scarves. Scarves. Where do you, do, do you buy these yeah. jokes at a joke well, store? We'll, I mean, we'll to, where do they come from? Apparently, we'll have to give them a call on our eyes. I'm paying too much. Oh, goodness. Okay, we got to go to the parade yes, yes. before we get in trouble here. Thanks, guys, for watching some of these floats go by. It's so great to be the pirate on the street and get to see these amazing faces along the crowd. I agree, Lee. The crew of Hillsborough is passing by our broadcast booth as we speak. The name originates from the Earl of Hillsborough, Will Hills, for whom Hillsborough County is named and was founded in 19, 1988 by a group of friends. Their motto is to seek and honor the namesake of our country through charity, as we've been talking about. So many of these crews participate in charitable contributions across our area. Yeah, mid-18th century lords and ladies theme in the tradition of the Earl of Hillsborough's time with women in long bodice dresses and men in vests, black pants, and boots looking sharp. And the crew is proud to sponsor students from the Metropolitan Ministries of Tampa every year. Right now, you're looking at the 6th Air Mobility Wing, MacDill Air Force Base finest. 
the USS Strato Tanker Pirate Ship. Walkers and riders represent all areas of the military service at McDill Air Force Base and volunteer to represent the base as ambassadors to the city. McDill Air Force Base is home to the 6th Air Mobility Wing. The wing is organized into five unique groups to carry out their mission to be America's premier mobility team, providing world-class refueling responsive airlift and air base support for headquarters U.S. Central Command. Our friends at iHeartMedia coming up next. This time it's U.S. 103.5, Tampa Bay's number one for new country music. Your all-time favorites. Are you a country I, music I, fan? I, my wife, ha, every time I get in the car, my wife has it on 103.5. And I, I, I adopted country music when you I did. fished. When I, when I lived here, I had a boat and I fished. And I listened to country music because fish like country music. Did you know that? Oh, that's nice something fish. new I learned catch today. More fish. Thanks to our friends at US 103.5. Got to crank that up in the fishing boat next time. Next up, my alma mater, the University of South Florida. I am so excited to see my people, the Bulls, and Lee has the new president of the university. Hey, Lee. Hi. So yeah, I'm, I'm on. I'm on the car with Rhea Law, who has just taken over the helm of the, of, you know, Jen Lee, the USF alum. So, uh, so what's it like out there? It's fantastic. There's so many USF fans, and they're all shooting USF, USF, and and using the bull sign is wonderful. And so, what do you have in plan now going forward for the end of the semester? Well, we've got a lot going on, as you know. We're looking at a stadium on campus. We've got a lot of people that are looking at that. We hope to have some news for you very shortly. Well, now that, my friends, is a tease, because we have been talking about having a stadium on campus for many, 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 many years. So. And it will make such a difference with our students and our faculty and alums that can come back to campus and really see the great things that we're doing. All right, Rhea Law, thank you so much. Enjoy the parade, and go Bulls. Go Bulls, you bet. Go Bulls, indeed. I am so excited to see the University of South Florida. Rocky there, the mascot. To see it. So you were there. You, you're, you're one of the most famous alumni, I imagine. I, I was there. I'm not sure I'm the most famous, but I'll tell you this. It's a great university. We have several people at News Channel A that graduated there who I went to college with and we are all still working together. It's, you know, it's a testament to how great it is to stay in this community and I feel very fortunate to have been able to do that. And yeah. I love seeing the green and gold go by. And, and it's so rare to be able in our business oh, to, yeah. to start at a TV station and just continue and to stay. in one in one city. And to stay. Started as a little intern when I was still a student at USF. And look at me now, Mom. Yeah. Look at me now. <laughs> I love it. It's great. So glad to be here. And we, you know what? This is this is a big deal coming up next. This is Colonel Benjamin Johnson. He is the commander of the 6th Air Mobility Wing at McDill Air Force Base. Kind of a big deal. I don't know if you've heard, yeah, Jeff. That, oh, I heard about it and I'd known about it. I was telling my wife about it. Colonel uh, Johnson assumed command of the 6th Air Mobility Wing during a change of command ceremony back in 2020 at McDill Air Force Base. He previously, excuse me, he previously served as the Vice Commander of the 379th Air Expeditionary Wing based in Qatar. So thankful for his service and his commitment to the community. Thank you, Benjamin Johnson, the Colonel there from McDill Air Force Base. Right behind Colonel Johnson is Representative Kathy Castor. She represents the 14th District of Florida covering Hillsborough and Pinellas County. She has been serving since 2007. And you know, she chairs the climate committee in the House of Representatives. And so I have gone back and forth with her several times. She's the champion of climate change solutions. I love to hear it, love to see her. There's a little pause in the action here. Uh, do we want to take a break, guys? All right, well then we're going to stand by. In the meantime, you are watching the Seminole Hard Rock Gasparilla Pirate Fest Parade of Pirates. We will be right will back. stay here.
Welcome back to the Seminole Hard Rack. Gasparilla Pirate Fest Parade of Pirates. We are really having a great time out here. The parade right. is ramping up. Everybody's so excited. It is great to be here. It is great to be here. We've already got a few beads. Oh, yeah, so I'm working feel, on my beads. Yeah, I feel like we're I making progress. I could use progress. a few more. I could use a few more. I know. You might have to, like, hoot and holler and... I'll do what I have to do. Make yourself uh, known. I'll do what I have to um, do. I, I do want to let you know if you're just joining us and you haven't heard the breaking news yet, NBC Sports is reporting that Tom Brady will announce his retirement from the NFL, which means obviously his retirement from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. His time here in the Bay Area has been just spectacular, record-breaking for him on many fronts. Obviously a big deal for us here because he took us to the Super Bowl, the very first ever yeah. NFL home turf Super Bowl. Uh, I'm kind of wondering if we'll see a repeat of that with the Rams because they, I'm yeah. just saying. I know. Well, you know what? It had, it had to happen at some point, but wow, he had such a great career and he ended on such a high note. Yes, and I'm glad that if, if he had to retire somewhere, I'm happy that uh, he spent his last part of his career here. here. right here in Tampa Bay. Janet Cruz is coming up now, the senator. She's a Democrat elected in 2018 to the Florida Senate, representing District 18, comprising a part of Hillsborough County and Tampa. And there she is. Throwing beads. Throw them our way. I mean, that's, Send us a couple of beads. Yeah, here we got to. Uh, let me see if I can get her attention. Yeah, yep, she sees us. She's right. waving. With beads. But Send us some beads. beads. Send us Send us beads. A, let's see what kind <laughs> of arm. What Oh, Janet not Cruz bad. Not okay, bad. she got right. inside. She got, she got inside the railing. Right. I, I like, like it. it. Very good. Thank you to Senator Janet Cruz for the bead assist. So again, as I was mentioning about Tom Brady, it's big news for this area. Uh, disappointing for some football fans, I'm sure. But if he had to leave, what a year to do it. Uh, this was a tough year for him too because he physically took some. Yeah some roughing up at times and he really started to talk a lot about the time he wanted to spend with his yeah. family I mean, and at the some time. point at some point right and well, this is that time i was i was here back in 2002 they won in 2002 mm -hmm. i believe if i remember correctly i was here when they won the super bowl back back then well let's so just hope that there are still bright things ahead for the Bucks. I know one thing for sure, there are bright things ahead for us here at this parade. We're gonna take a break, but in the meantime, you are watching the Seminole Hard Rock Gasparilla Pirate Fest Parade of Pirates. Stay with us. You are looking right now at the Seminole Hard Rock Gasparilla Pirate Fest Parade of Pirates. Some of the dignitaries making their way through as we speak. Well, it's hard to tell who's who here, but... This is Orlando, Orlando Goods, Goods. Yeah, okay. from the Tampa City Council. He's the chairman of the Tampa City Council. Good right. to see him. Okay. Putting the wave in. He's got the there cigar. Is. That is a Tampa scene right there. Good to see you, Orlando. That. Right behind him is Kimberly Overman, chairman of the Hillsborough County Commission. And you know, Jeff, the uh, parade stepped off about 20, 25 minutes late. And so that's why we're just getting to the dignitaries at this point. Uh, the weather playing a role in some of the delays here. The, the landing yeah. of the flotilla was a little bumpy. It's not easy docking a boat, especially when you have a lot of wind. I had a boat for years, so I know that. And uh, But they did a good job. They made it. 
And here we are in the middle of the parade, and the crew of Augustina is kind of in the background there. They're on their way in. They are indeed. We're starting to see I, uh, the crew of Augustina. I can see some of their pirates out in front. Take a look at some of these beads. We're going to have to you see. Oh, we got the bead cam on. Yeah, the bead mm -hmm. cam is on. We got to see if we can get some attention over here. Yeah, we, I think we get can them do to it. throw us one of those. Those are the, those, as we mentioned before, are the good beads. So we'll see if we can get their attention. Where are the, the good beads? The big long The big ones? Beads. Okay, yeah, the pink ones. The, good the pink ones are the good ones. Okay. The crew of Augustina de Aragon. This, the volunteer-based crew formed in 1997 to commemorate the heroic deeds of Augustina de Aragon, a Spanish maiden of Zaragoza, Spain, who defended her town against Napoleon's army. The founder, Peggy Sherry, mm -hmm. the president, Natalie James, they're a good-looking crew. Now, you have a bit of history with the crew of Augustina, right? <laughs> you know, now that I realize, yes. So back in 1997 is when I started working here in the Tampa Bay area, okay. and I spent some time with the crew of Augustina, and I did, and I participated in some of their events, and I believe I was about to become a member of the crew when I ended up leaving a few years later and uh, heading out of town for a little while. And now yeah. look at you, hosting oh, the parade, waving to the crew of Augustina. And, and I'm, I have a feeling I will be joining a crew at some point because I like the idea of being part of a social group that does good in the that community. That does, right, yeah. it gives yep. back. Well, we're looking at their first float here. The, both their floats are replicas of the town of Zaragoza, Spain. The first float represents the city walls fronted by the likeness of Augustina de Aragon firing the cannon. The side turrets, they feature the crew logo and coat of arms of Aragon. It's actually a really sharp looking float. Yeah, I like it a lot. And their second float is the town's marketplace. Fun. Uh, members volunteered for 6,000 hours of service for over 50 nonprofit organizations focusing on women and children. And you know, they formed in 97, but they're up to 200 and 40 members. Now, this is interesting because I remember there being a co-ed right. crew. That's right. That's right. Which was rare at the time, I exactly. believe. Exactly. The females are called Augustinas. The male auxiliaries are known as the thorns because there are roses among the thorns. The crew's motto is work hard, play hard, give back, do all the things with a full heart. And I mean, I, I'm just going to go all fashionista on you for a minute here, but the costumes are patterned after the peasants of Spain from the 1800s, the women in peasant blouses with full skirts and cinched corsets, and the men wearing black pants and colorful peasant shirts covered by a tunic. So there you have that. All right, and right behind them, the crew of Carnival. It is uh, self-sponsored by the International Independent Showman's Association. And members are traveling in, or traveling carnival circus businesses proudly represent the carnival industry. We have clowns, we have carnival rides, we have a merry-go-round, we have popcorn and cotton candy, which I would like, we would like some popcorn. Oh, goodness, and yes, is that an option? Candy. Are they throwing popcorn uh, and cotton candy? I don't know. Yes, please. And stuffed animals, by the way. I have a little baby girl, Gracie Lee, she could use a stuffed she animal. She could use a crew of carnival. Oh, this is the this. of some kind. Let's see. Oh, and they've got the music cranked up. This was founded in 1965, celebrating 57 years of service to the community. The club raised thousands for charities over the years. Just some of the charities they support, the Mary Martha House, the Joshua House, St. Joseph's Hospital for Children, Deputy Darlings, the list goes on I like their style. I like their music. I like their colors. This is, this is my favorite. This might be my favorite so far. OK. Is, yeah. oh, I'm oh, not going to pick favorites. Oh, beads, beads. Come on, get those beads. <laughs> Next up, we have F Troop Tampa. This is their 17th year in the parade. The crew theme based on the television sitcom called F Troop, which aired in the 60s. It took place in the American West after the Civil War. This crew was founded in 2004. Now, the float was built in 2000 turn, uh, 2013 by the F Troop members and friends. It's a replica of Fort Courage from the 60s TV sitcom F Troop, which we mentioned. Its tow vehicles is a deuce, a retired two and a half ton, 1967 military Kaiser. Boy, do we have, all right, we're getting some good. Oh, can I? Yeah, now, now can, we're getting my, the good may beads. May I have the good beads? Please have the okay. good beads. You can give right. those to Baby Gracie uh, yep. from the F These are crew. too heavy for, for Baby Gracie. <laughs> here, here, you get here. You know what? Good. This crew is dedicated to having fun while improving and enriching the community and the lives of those within the organization. I feel like my life is enriched already with the beads that they've thrown to me and to this crowd. And looking at the crowd, I think they would agree with us here. Yep, the main charity event is a barbecue and Christmas party for the Boys and Girls Club of Tampa Bay. 
other charities that they support, Shriners Hospitals and Circus, and uh, a brighter community. The crew is dedicated to having fun while improving and enriching the community and the lives of those within the organization. I couldn't have said it better myself, Jeff. <laughs> Next up, the crew of Chasco is headed our way. You see them there. They are supported by the city of Newport Ritchie. They have 60 members. They were founded in 1999 by founding president Roger Michaels to honor the Calusa Indian Trial, which the Chasco Festival is centered around. Did you know the annual Chasco Fiesta celebration is in Newport Ritchie from March 22nd through April 2nd, so coming up. And just like so many of the floats, this one was also rebuilt in that one year off yeah. back in uh, 2020 with an Americana theme to reflect America through the ages while celebrating the Calusa heritage of its origin. The costumes are native Indian costumes. And just like so many other crews, they are very charitable. The crew has given over $3,000 to the Moffitt uh, Digni Cap Foundation and raised money and participated in plenty of community events. There we go. Hey, guys. Very cool. It's a good looking float. I see lots of beads on that float. Now, next up, I believe we have a uh, Eumistic crew of Gasparilla, as I mentioned, that they are just an integral part of it. The, they're the reason we have this parade yep, every year. Uh -huh. Lee Spann is standing by right now with another interview with the captain of the crew. Hey, Lee. Uh, I am. At first, I wanted to let Jeff know that little Grace Lee, I got her uh, the perfect stuffed animal, so this is just for her. Who doesn't want a pirate that, banana? That's about, so this is safe for Grace. That's about right. five times her size. <laughs> okay. Key to the city, perhaps. Uh, Perhaps that's nicer than a banana. Oh, I, love I it. don't know. I would love so this it. Is, Go ahead. This is Peter Lackman, and thank you so much for being the captain of Gasparilla. It is my pleasure to be the captain of Gasparilla. Tampa's been waiting for an invasion for two years. We got the key. Mayor Castor's been cooperative. Look at this beautiful day. Tell your friends in Philly how the sun is. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I want to talk a little bit about the fact that you are a legacy at the Mr. Crew. Your dad helped build what is now the Jose Gasparilla. That is true. My father built that ship in 1954 and sailed it from the 50s to the 90s as the sailing master. And tell us what it's like being out here as you walk along. How long have you been the captain? Oh, man, two-year term. This is my final year. This is the best thing ever. You know, welcome to Tampa. This is the best Tampa has to offer, and we're so proud of it. We're so happy to be here. And the, and the weather, albeit, albeit chilly, is gorgeous. You got to thank the weather people for this beautiful right. weather today, okay? You like how I solicited that compliment, right? I like to hear it. I like to hear it. Fishing. You were fishing. Jeff, Jeff is also saying thanks for that. So thank you. Enjoy, enjoy the rest of the trip. Have a great one. Uh, Peter Lackman right there. That's like Gasparilla royalty. Yep. Also, speaking of Gasparilla royalty, how do you like that for a segue? This is you missed a crew of Gasparilla royal court you're looking at there. All right, this is the crew that started it all. You missed a crew of Gasparilla. This year's Royal Court has reigned for two years and is the only court in recent history to do so. Unprecedented times we've been living in these past yep. two years. So now the Royal Float has a king, and I'm going to tell you his name is James Bubba Turner III and the queen, Martha Davis Strass. Mm -hmm. It's quite an honor, too, for them. And they're called courtiers? Yes. Okay. Uh, James Robbins, uh, John Avery Gutan. The fourth. The fourth, the fourth. Uh, Grant <laughs> Adams Burt, William Asbury Few, Nicholas Alexio Cirilli. Well done, friend, mm -hmm. well done. You missed a crew of Gasparilla Royal Court. Uh, the queen is attended by maids, Catherine Curtis, Sydney Sultanfuss, Catherine Wetcher. Kate Maddox and Jacqueline Joyce. Now, Ye Mystic Crew of Gasparilla sponsors and presents this parade every single year. We've been telling you about that for the citizens of the Bay Area. So it is because of them that we have this tremendous tradition. And I said it before, but I'll say it again if you're just joining us. Third biggest parade in the U.S. I mean, that's insane. Just behind the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade and the Rose Parade, which is so crazy cool. to me, so but it's cool. right here in the Tampa Bay Such area. Such a big deal. Such a big deal. Hey, guys. Coming up right behind the Royal Court is Ye Mystic Crew of Gasparilla Skull and Treasure. 
Do you know why they call it Skull and Treasure? I, I don't, I don't. Take a look. I see a skull and some treasure? Yes! Oh, Nailed oh, it! Okay. Nailed it! This Is that a treasure map? <laughs> That's a treasure map. <laughs> That's how you know to find the treasure. Uh -huh. It was built in 2016, crafted for two years by three in-house artists and engineers together with a host of finishing airbrush artists. It's a good looking float. It holds up to 75 pirates, and I gotta tell you, boy, they really do put a lot of time and effort into this. Now, each side is detailed parchment maps showing the way to hidden treasures, so you might wanna pause your yeah, DVR so you can DVR figure that. out, yeah, figure out where that treasure is. In the center uh, of is a pirate rotating on a priceless bed of gold and jewels. In one hand, he holds the X that marks the spot where he found the treasure. And on the other hand is a pistol to ward off any unwelcome souls after his treasure. And hot on the trail is the Bonnie Reed crew, celebrating its 27th year parading as pirates. The float is a replica of the vanity, the ship sailed by Annie Bonnie, Mary Reed, and Calico Jack. The costumes reflect how Mary and Anne had to disguise themselves as men. Plumed hats, colorful capes, vests and sashes, pirate blouses, black pants and shoes, and the white stockings, and they are looking good today. And, and the crew motto is pretty hardcore. Had you fought like a man, you need not have been hanged like a dog. That is the crew motto. The Buffalo Soldiers coming up next, another fan favorite. We are on them now. You see them coming this way. Woods and Wanton Chapter of the 9th and 10th Force Cavalry Association. They became known as the Buffalo Soldiers due to their exploits in the American West. They were founded back in 1988 by cavalry descendants and African members with prior military service. The Tampa Chapter is named after Congressional Medal of Honor recipients Sergeant Brent Woods, Troop B 9th Cavalry. Uh, Indian Wars and PVT George W. Wanton Troop M 10th Cavalry Spanish American War. They are throwing some good beats too. Big fat gold beads. I can hear the crowd going crazy as they go by. It's good to see the Buffalo Soldiers. All right, next up, the crew of Bobby C. Davis, the sailingist crew. Oh. The crew is named after Bobby C. Davis, the first Commodore of Davis Island Yacht Club and a pioneer of yacht racing in the Bay Area. Fun fact, did you know it's Davis Island? Islands, yes. And Girl. actually, Keith told me that yesterday. Yes. I, and I was on Davis Island, and I was down near that yacht club, just about two Davis Islands, just about two weeks ago. So that's how you get street cred with the locals. You call Davis it Davis Islands. Islands. Uh, I like it. Yeah. And I love it there, by the way. I love that island. It is so, beautiful. Those islands. That crew of Bobby C. Davis, good to see them. You know, we've talked a lot today about all the charitable work that these crews do. Mm -hmm. This one coming up right now does a ton in the Bay Area. This is the On Bikes group. And if you haven't heard of them, you want to pay special attention. Okay, Lee is standing by. Lee, please make sure they know. I love this organization. I love the work they do in this community. Jen Lee is telling you how much she loves your organization, and I think she speaks for a lot of our community. So this is Julius Tobin, and he, he started On Bikes. So why don't you tell me a little bit about what On Bikes is? Man, I'm one of the, I'm one of the founders. We are a charity, and we give bikes to at-risk and foster kids. Throughout Tampa Bay, we have some amazing events, and we're just happy to be here today. Today is incredible. We're surrounded by our supporters and sponsors, and we wouldn't want to be anywhere else. And I started interviewing you about this when it was a, a just starting. So what made it? What made you want to give bikes to kids? I mean, honestly, who who doesn't remember their first bike? It's a it's a it's a sense of uh, responsibility. It's a it's a way to get to boys and girls clubs or after school practices. It's it can mean so many things to so many people. And we're just honored to be here and. The Tampa Bay community just embraced us. Well, we love it. We love that you have the build. The whole community comes out to build the bike. And then you have the Winter Wonder Ride. So thank you for being part of our community. Thank you. So thank you. All, All right. right. God, send it back to you. Right. Thank, thank you, Lee. Lee. We appreciate it. Who do we have next, Jeff? It is the Yi Crew of Valor. It's their fifth year in the parade. The crew is made up of both veterans and community members who volunteer throughout the year for charitable events once again and activities hosted by the parent organization, which is a post-9-11 Veterans Corps. 
There are plenty of new residents here in the Bay Area. The pandemic has brought a lot of people flooding in from parts north and parts west. And so if they're wondering what Gasper is really about, it's this. And we keep echoing the sentiment yeah. of the charitable work that these crews do. I mean, don't get me wrong. This is about pirates and fun and getting beads and celebrating with your family, but it's also about giving back to the community. So it's so wonderful. You can have fun and give back all at the same time. Here's some beads. That is a fact. Yeah. Thank you for my beads, my friend. Uh, another organization that is just tremendous, near and dear to our hearts, is the Rough Riders. Yep. Uh, we have actually done a, a lot of work with the Rough Riders. We have our teddy bear roundup every year at Christmas time. We give those bears back to the community. Our viewers participate with us. We love it. And Jeff Patterson, our uh, resident pirate expert, is a member of this particular crew, the Rough Riders, and Lee Spann is standing by with him now. Well, one of our favorites, Jen Lee, right? Absolutely. All right, so, of course, I'm here with another one of our favorites, of course, Jeff Patterson, who's been such an integral part of the Rough Riders over the past few years as past president. Um, what is this What is this gas gorilla like as opposed to some of the other ones? You know, it's wonderful to be back, first of all, just doing a parade here in Tampa because this is what Tampa is all about. And I'm really honored to be with 560 of my good friends, the Rough Riders, out here, including Tampa City Councilman Joseph Citro, who's walking next to me today. But I want to point out a couple of things, because we are led by our Lieutenant Colonel Billy Hogan, who's president this year, uh, and it takes a lot to get to that position. And as president, you get to wear a tunic. It's a tan tunic. You ride on top, top of the coal car. It's to honor the service that you put into the club, all the hours of you know, volunteerism you've done for the club. And Billy has done something unique this year. He's allowed Colonel John Howell and Colonel Darren McLean to wear their tunics as well because they put in all of the hours to be president. And they didn't get quite to have the parade experience that they did. And so Lieutenant Colonel Hogan has allowed them to, uh, to do this. And I think it's a great gesture on his part. We also have a banner on the side of one of our floats today honoring one of our past presidents, Colonel David Klassen, who has been in the hospital, unfortunately, for a significant amount of time dealing with a, a, an injury. And so we're wishing David to get well soon and to get back out here. We, we look forward to him being back out here. But this is just a great thing for us. And I, a couple of things I want to mention. If it wasn't for Channel 8 viewers, the Rough Riders wouldn't be able to deliver as many teddy bears as we do. And so we're honored that they still allow us to do that. In the memory of John Winter, our friend, who was our weather forecaster for many years and who was a Rough Rider and collected teddy bears. And so that's a great thing. I also want to welcome Jeff Biardelli to be a meteorologist and to tell him, you know, Jeff, I was at Channel 8. I left for a few months. They were nice enough to, they were nice enough to uh, hire me back and to welcome me back into the city of Tampa. And so, Jeff, welcome to Tampa. <laughs> My you, first day back as a reporter at Channel 8 was to cover this parade. That's and awesome. so this parade, this parade means a lot to me. And so that we're very happy that this is, uh, this is Jeff's first day back here at Channel 8. I love the name Jeff. Uh, and Jeff, thank <laughs> yeah, the name you so Jeff, much exactly, for that. Right? Yeah. So nice of you to welcome me like that, Jeff. Yeah. And, and you know, you can tell how much Jeff loves the Rough Riders, loves this parade. Uh, wow, we have beats flying at like 100 miles an hour right here. You are watching the Seminole Hard Rock Gasparilla Pirate Fest Parade of Pirates. We will be right back.
Live coverage of the 2022 Seminole Hard Rock Gasparilla Pirate Fest and Gasparilla Parade of Pirates, presented by Ye Mystic Crew of Gasparilla. Gasparilla Pirate Fest, sponsored by Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino Tampa. Discover your rhythm at Central Florida's premier resort destination. Bud Light Seltzer, no beer, just great taste. And Ye Mystic Crew of Gasparilla, proudly presenting Tampa's signature Gasparilla events since 1904. News Channel H broadcast is sponsored by New South Window Solutions, the ultimate Florida window. Visit NewSouthWindow.com for more information. Tampa General Hospital. Other hospitals practice medicine. We define it. Diamonds International. For all your treasure needs, come see the sparkle for yourself. And Frontier. Do what cable can't with Frontier's 100% fiber optic network. Welcome back. You are watching Seminole Hard Rock Gasparilla the Pirate Fest Parade of Pirates. And before your very eyes, this is you missed a crew of Gasparilla Skeleton Cove. This float was redone 10 years ago in 2012, designed and rebuilt by the Rivers family. You missed a crew, obviously, a huge and loud, loud part I mean, of this I parade. might be deaf. I, what did you say? <laughs> what? Yeah, a good thing is about being a meteorologist, you just have to do math and science. You don't necessarily have to hear that well, I don't think. <laughs> well, luckily, sure. luckily we have these headphones on because otherwise we'd be in trouble right we now. Our eardrums trouble. would be in trouble. Compass is coming up next. This is their very first time in the parade. I'm excited to see them. Of note, the float is a black pirate ship with around 20 real estate agents riding inside. The riders are wearing branded pirate outfits with the Compass logo or Compass mm -hmm. Gasparilla logo. And of course, you probably heard of Compass. Compass is a real estate brokerage, and along with some of their other agent teams, they are a new sponsor of Gasparilla. Compass is the country's largest independent real estate brokerage. It's right. always cool to see a first-timer in the parade. So see, you're not the only one. I know. Well, I, but you're no, in good company. Yeah, I know. This is this Although, is this is only your first time hosting. It's yeah. not your first time at the parade. I have been here. I, so I was here a couple times when I worked here, and then I brought my wife here like about eight, nine years ago on vacation. It just so happened that Gas I didn't realize that Gasparilla was happening that weekend. Perfect so we got they a chance say to timing is everything. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. I think coming up next is the iHeartMedia 95.7 The Beat float Tampa Bay's number one for hip-hop and R&B so now I'm really intrigued to see what what the music the vibe yes. is when they go by and when they do we should be listening closely their channel is hosted by the beat mob and I'm told DJ Pro Style, Michael McGuire, Queen B, and DJ Shizm. This is one thing I need to do is relearn the radio stations around here. Because I know. when you move around for a long time, they be, all become kind of jumbled in your brain. I agree. So. I agree. But we are lucky. We have a lot of really great radio personalities in this community who, as you know, to keep with the recurring theme, we do a lot of good charitable work in this community as well. So shout out to our friends at iHeartMedia and 95.7 The Beat. There they are. They're looking good. The royal crew of privateers coming up next. This float represents the private vessels that were commissioned as warships to protect America during the American Revolution. You may notice the costumes, 18th century uniforms. Of note, they were founded back in uh, 2002 by 11 businessmen of the Tampa Bay area. A co ed crew, another co ed crew, nice. 68 members from Florida, Texas, and Georgia. The crew's mission is to spread goodwill and smiles to patients and staff of all children's hospital in St. Petersburg. And to date, they've donated $60,000 to all children's hospital. Johns Hopkins, all children's hospital, another favorite of ours here oh. at News Channel 8. Nice to see a crew giving back to that particular location. And speak, crew, speaking crew of members giving back. The hospital the Friday before the parade, passing out beads and stuffed animals to the patients. So kudos to them. The crew of the Conquistadors of Tampa Bay coming up next to look at these pirates. The crew is named after Panfilo de Navarraz, the first Spanish explorer to land in St. Petersburg at John's Pass in 1528. Wow. That's a long time ago. Uh, costumes modeled after Spanish conquistadors of the 14th and 15th century. Men's costumes are Spanish conquistadors circa 1528. They're having a good time, and there's a lot of them on that float. And you know, I'm going to correct myself here. It's Panfilo de Narvaez. 
got to get it right if he's the guy that was the first one to explore land in St. Petersburg at John's Pass. I couldn't have done it any better than you. Like, got to do what's right. Ye loyal crew of Grace O'Malley, I want to give you a little history here. Okay. When I was a student at USF, okay. we had to come, one of our assignments was to come cover the parade. So we came down, one of my friends, co-students, we came down and we shadowed the crew of Grace O'Malley. I'm going to say circa 19... Okay, well, it's the first all-female pirate crew founded in 1992, okay, so you're so off by two years. Okay, so it was 1992? Uh-huh. All right. And you're off just by two years. Yeah, this their motto is fun, friendship, and frivolity. So I have a lot of respect for the alliteration alone. Yes, I mean, it's, it's a good it's time had by all. The first float is the Rock Fleet. It's newly refurbished and modeled after one of Grace O'Malley's castles in Ireland. So they have they have three floats in, yeah. in this parade. That's They're a kind lot. of a big deal. That, that's a lot of work. Um, the second float is Grace. My daughter's name is Grace. Oh, perfect. Yes, is a pirate ship crashing through the waves featuring a seahorse masthead. Yeah, wait yes. for it. Okay. Wait for it. It's uh, coming. Up uh, oh, there it is. Yep. Oh, I like the seahorse. Nice touch. Seahorses are so nice. Yeah, yeah. they are. Nice they are touch. Really, very nice. Very majestic. <laughs> The crew of Grace O'Malley is named for a real historic figure who was the daughter of the head of an ancient Irish clan. She became a powerful and historically documented Irish pirate queen who ruled the seas in the 15th century. I'm, can I just hit pause for a second and find out how to become a pirate queen? Is there like a place I sign up? Is there a place I volunteer? Pirate queen. That's not bad. That's not a I bad. Know, it's a pretty can, cool title, right? I think I think they'll give it to you if you ask. Okay, yeah. I'm going to yeah. ring up the folks over at Grace O'Malley, see what we can get done. Now, I think we might be on to float number three, uh, the loyal crew of Grace O'Malley. Yeah, the carrot. It's another castle. You think they're happy to see us? I. They sound like they're very happy to see us right now. The third float, the Carrick, is another castle with crew members on board. You mm. see it right there. The seahorse, a recurring theme for them. Yeah, you know, it's amazing. I, I don't know how they have the time in the day. I know. To, they have three, three different three, three floats. Different, three different floats. The costumes, yep. I mean. It's like go big or go home. That's right. Yep. Gross yep. Up, Grace they O'Malley went big. showing them how it's done over here. Good right. to see those beautiful ladies. Now, they support uh, a bunch of different charities each year that are chosen by a member who has shown outstanding community service. So, you know, like I mentioned before, I, honestly, I was saying that and I remember that, but now that I read through this, it's, cool, it, right? it, it, it's, it's great to see just that so much of this goes, goes to charity. So much of the work goes to charity. I agree. I think we are going to take a break. Am I right, guys? Oh, oh, no, no, no. We're not taking a break because we're getting to the good part. I'm just kidding, y'all. We're going to see the faces of eight. All right. Some people you might know. Mm -hmm. Take a look at these scallywags right here. Do they look familiar? They do. That's our News Channel 8 family, our teammates there on the inaugural News Channel 8 float. We're so happy to be in this year's parade. I'm a little parade. jealous, to be honest. I know, they do. I mean, I like being here, but... But throwing beads to mm, a screaming crowd, doesn't that bad. sound like a good time? It really does. I think I see Josh Benson up do in the middle there. And you know what? Lee Spann is standing by as we speak with Avery Cotton, Chris Martinez, and Deanne King. Oh, hey, Josh B. Hey, Lee. What has it been like? Loud, but awesome, awesome. Everyone is so excited to be here. The energy today is awesome. We're having so much fun. The energy is awesome. Everybody just wants bees, bees, bees. I'm like, I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> so I, so I want to ask Deanne, because I was helping her plan her outfit to, to stay warm. What's the weather been like? How's it felt? A hot mess, but a cold mess. Listen, <laughs> let me tell y'all, it's so cold out there. However, the hot hands help. And the layering, for sure, Lee with the fleece leggings, my girl, you came through. <laughs> all right, so t t talk a little bit about the faces of eight. What all have you guys been seeing out there? Well, one thing we can tell you for sure is that y people are thrilled that Gasparilla is back because there is just an incredible excitement from one end to the other and huge crowds, as you would expect in any Gasparilla. So the cold definitely did not stop people from coming out. Or what if, yeah, what if you think 
right? Yeah. Bonds fans are holding up signs. It's people's birthdays today, so it's been a good time. It has been a good time. I think I am shocked by how many people actually showed up. Yeah. I mean, I don't really think the weather had that big of an impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, and really, people are just layered up. Yeah, they comes out. It's such a beautiful day anyway. Yeah. So it's really not as cold as I thought it was going to be. I was prepared for, and it, I mean, I layered. I had my wool on, so we're good. Yeah, the, the sun is out. You know, we have such a, a, a history with Gasparilla. It is so nice that now we get to see the faces of people, and they can yeah. see the face of us because yeah. we've always been in the in the booth and, yep. and, and sending it to people out at home. I'm just so glad we're in the middle of it this year. I think it's also cool. We've noticed some people, they'll be like, wait, it's all of them. <laughs> like all at, all at once in public. And so I think it's just been incredible seeing some faces. Yeah, agreed. Well, you are, you are an amazing crew out there. And I, and I am lucky to get to work with them every day. So tune in every morning at 4.30 on WFLA. <laughs> well, we're on the air until 7, too. Great plug, Lee. Yeah. Great plug. <laughs> I'll send it back to you. Uh, they got to be careful. It's all of them on one float. If something happens and they don't drive right and there's an accident, that would be very bad. So they got to be uh, very let careful. Let me tell you, although think of all the journalists there to cover the breaking news. I mean, <laughs> that is the point. Upside, right? <laughs> that, is, that is a very good point. <laughs> there are our friends. I see Allison Henning. I see Josh Benson. Oh, Josh Benson uh -oh, launching the Josh beads. Josh is launching beads at like wow. 80 miles an hour towards wow. us. Trying to show off there. There we go. We have all of our favorite friends there. All right, I could talk about Channel 8 okay. all day, we but I, we on. got we work to do. The crew of Venus coming up. This is the second oldest crew founded in 1965. This was the very first co-ed crew okay. and the first to throw beads in 1985. So you're welcome, Tampa Bay. I love it. Now, there are two floats. The okay. first one uh, is the float carry crew members. Um, Kingsguard men's costumes in crimson gold, purple and gray, cavalier and musketeer style. And the women's costumes, purple and gold, 15th century Renaissance style. They look great. And they look like they're having a good time. Now this second float that's coming our way, it carries the 2022 Royal Four. It's worth mentioning. The King Venus 56, Mark Smith, the Queen Venus 56, is Colleen Smith. Oh, and Gail Guardado was a queen in 1988 and 89. Fun facts. Mm -hmm. The crew of Sea Saviors is up next. The fun-loving steampunk sky pirates. Jules Verne meets the Victorian age and a whimsical flying ship powered by sail, steam, and jet engines. Now, the float is called the Kraken and was designed and hand-built by the crew, the crew steampunk pirates. And they figured out you don't fight the beast, you tame it. You tame it, baby. That's how it works. Steampunk Air Pirates and Adventurers, the 10th year in the parade. They have 150 members, and they like to have fun. And just like so many of the crews, they focus on assisting people in our community in building aid and philanthropy and leading change for our veterans and other local charities supporting the USO and local VFW chapters. So great to see them. We're happy to have them in the parade today. Ye crew of Sir Henry Morgan is making its way down the parade route as we speak. Founded in 2001, it's 80 members strong. The members are a ferocious crew of scurvy dogs, buccaneers, corsairs, wenches, interlopers, and primpers based out of Tampa Bay. And the crew pays homage to the Captain Sir Henry Morgan, a Welsh Navy admiral who led a raid of Spade's Caribbean colonies back in the late 17th century. This okay. parade is going strong. The crew of Sir Henry Morgan is going to help us go to break right now. You are watching the Seminole Hard Rock Gasparilla Pirate Fest Parade of Pirates. Go we'll back with more in a moment.
Welcome back. You are watching the seminal Hard Rock Gasparilla Pirate Fest Parade of Pirates. It is going strong. Things are coming faster. Everybody's having a great time. It is a beautiful day here in Tampa. The crew of Alegria is in our sights. This is their debuting a new float. The crew's been working on the float tirelessly for months, and it makes its grand entrance today. Their motto is Viva Alegria, which means live joy. I love that. That seems to be the motto of everybody in the Tampa Bay area. Uh, you know, they're celebrating 36 years of parade participation, and they're made up of approximately 50 professional women of all ethnicities and backgrounds throughout the Tampa Bay area. Uh, the crew provides athletic-style shoes to needy children throughout the Tampa Bay area, works with Florida Sheriff's Youth Branches, and the Trey Curry Foundation. I love it. They were founded in 1986 by Diane Rocky Valdez and Diane Henry as the first all-female crew. Love the work they do, love to see them. You missed a crew of Neptune is coming our way. This is Pinellas County's oldest crew, over 40 years, and it is the sixth oldest crew in the Tampa Bay area, 100 members. They were a social club that was formed back in uh, 1980, honoring Neptune, God of the Sea. The float features King, King Neptune and the sea adorned by two full-size mermaids, dolphins, giant seashells, and seaweed. The float was built by members in 2002 and updated in 2010. I would say this motto. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to say their motto. <laughs> Numquam ludimus, which Hello. loosely translated in Latin, we never have any fun. What? We always have fun. Is that OK? No, you did great. I think you did it perfectly. All right. We'll see. The Twitter, Twitter will tell me if I said it right. King Neptune's Rex, Casey Clark, the Queen, Shardia Prasad, the crew captain Stuart Sim, and members of the royal court. And, and the costume, the theme is 19th century British soldiers representing the military force that freed Tampa from gas bars of the pirates of the pirates occupation. Oh, here we go. Here's the mystic crew of Neptune. We're getting a better look at this float right here. Nice seashell. How often do you get to say that? Nice seashell. Nice seashell. Nice seashell. I, I've never said it before. <laughs> Today's That's definitely the a first day. one. No, but wow, that really is, that is decorated really well. I yeah. mean, they did, they did a great job they on that. They did a beautiful yeah. job. The mermaid, Neptune, that is a party. Oh, and I love that they have their that they're two tiered. You, if you need, if you want the sun, you can be up top. Yep. You wanna you wanna be sheltered from the sun. If it's raining, you can be down below. I mean, they prepared for every eventuality. They certainly have. Coming up right behind them, crew of Semper Fi. They were founded in 2018. The crew's an outreach program of marine families, a Florida-based organization that honors, supports, educates, and inspires military veterans, their families. It's such a great organization. Yes, and the Marine Families Organization provides community outreach while promoting awareness and education on the daily sacrifices being made by our military. And the float is Marine Corp Tank. Take a look at that, looking good. That's a good looking group right there. Yep, there's the tank right there. Woo! Now, uh, the men are dressed as mechanics in full coveralls, and the women are dressed as Rosie the Riveter. I love cultural, it. Cultural icon and star of the campaign aimed at recruiting female workers for defense industries during World War II. You're getting a good look at all those Rosies right there. I love to see it. Coming up behind them is the U.S. Army Recruiting Battalion of Tampa making a little noise, getting the crowd hyped, represents the U.S. Army and the Tampa community and is charged with recruiting the best young men and women for service in the United States Army. Important work they're doing here in the community. For sure. They were formed in 1991. The battalion has adopted the Gator as its mascot. Gators lead the way. The battalion is celebrating its 25th year associated with the Gasparilla Parade of Pirates. And it consists of uh, 300 soldiers, civilians, and contractors comprising five companies arrayed throughout Central and Southwest Florida. And the soldiers are dressed in military uniform. Hey, guys. They look good. And right behind them, East Bay High School. These are the marching Indians. You see them in their red and gray. Their band director, Brian Mason. The drum major. Oh, help me here. I'm going to try to say it right. <laughs> I don't know Nat if I can help you. Natalia Isaguez. I'm going to say Natalia Isaguez is the drum major, the band captain, 
Vicky Arietta Morales. I have to tell you, I'm impressed by your pronunciation. Uh, who knows if it's, it's almost like you've been doing it's almost like you've been doing this for years. <laughs> I mean, I hope I'm doing them proud though by saying it correctly because the East Bay High School marching Indians make us proud. And uh, the music is called Smoke on the Water, which we are all familiar with, by Deep Purple, and play that funky music. They do. They do. They're professionals. Love to see talented young musicians in our community. So what do you think so far of your first hosting responsibilities here at the Gasparilla Parade? It's wonderful. It's really great, honestly. Yeah. And people are having so much fun. And, and that's why so many people come here. I mean, literally the whole country has now moved to the Tampa Bay area. <laughs> and I say that because the housing market is the hottest in the United States right now. It's crazy. People want to be here, and this We're is one it. of the reasons why people want to be here, because it offers a great lifestyle, good quality of living. We're here to have fun and enjoy our lives. And it is a fun time. The West Chase crew of Freebooters are proving what we speak right now. Today's members hail from the Tampa community of West Chase. Crew is home to the official Mermaids of Gasparilla and is also called the Mermaid Crew. They were founded back in 2003. This is their 12th time in the parade. They have very loud horns. That I can tell you for sure. You can hear it loud and clear. And look at these mermaids. Uh -huh and their elaborate mermaid tails, just beautiful. Oh, they're having a good time. They are having a good time. I wonder how warm a mermaid tail is. It's gotta be warmer than I am right now. <laughs> I mean, it's getting that, chilly. I can, I, that I can tell the you. The sun has dropped behind the trees and ooh, it's, it's dropping in temperature here. You missed a crew of Gasparilla, happy pirate. One of my favorite floats of this parade because aren't we all happy pirates right now? This was redesigned in 2010, built in six months by the staff of You Missed a Crew Gasparilla. It features a pirate celebrating the successful capture of the city of Tampa, and it's wrapped with 10 years of official YMKG artwork, adorning the sides of the float with the current design replacing the oldest each year, and it seats up to 80 pirates. So do you see the side panels there? Really yep. cool. Yeah. A lot this of This is another artwork. one. I love, look at Jose Gaspar in the front. I love uh, how much work and detail that was put into this. You know, I really got to get into this. I have to join a crew and help I'm build the float. You, Although, the honestly, out there. I'm not very good with my hands. So I don't know if they're going to want me actually building the floats. They might want they you might to build the They might fall apart. That's what they'll recruit you for. That's the fine. crew of Italia. You're looking at them right now. They formed in 2004. They serve as the official crew of the historic Italian club of Tampa, which dates back to 1892. A rich history in this community. I don't know if you know this, but I'm Italian. Veradelli. So maybe, I, 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 yeah. maybe, maybe, I'm maybe just they're saying, the crew this for me. Your maybe crew. they're the crew for me. It's possible. The charity work they do in the community, they support Festa Italiana, the annual major fundraiser for their Italian club, Campo Italiano, which provides a summer educational program for children, the Italian Invitational Golf Tournament, which is a fundraiser for Special Olympics, and the longest running charitable event of its kind in the Tampa Bay area. Thank you to the and, crew. And they also make the Italian. best eggplant parmesan, I understand. That's just, I'm just saying. <laughs> Fun facts <laughs> with Italian Jeff Baradelli. All right, uh, next up is the Ye Enchanted crew of Brigadoon. That's right, All nailed right. it. Oh, we're gonna be tossing it to Lee Spann now, who's on the street there, and she's got a cool interview for us, Lee. Yes, I'm here with Ken Aikens, and he is with the Brigadoon crew. And first of all, very interesting story about what Brigadoon is. We are a Scottish Celtic crew, and it's the base on the Brigadoon that disappears and reappears and you can see that we have our dragon on the top of our float as well and so you guys are, are really in, uh, you know you're with your charity it's something that's very special to all of you yes our recent charity that we uh, that we donate all of our funds to for this time of the year is our US Institute against human trafficking well we appreciate you guys doing that all year long but today is a celebration so what's the celebration been like for the Brigadoon crew Oh, we were just ready to get back at the parade. As you can tell from our MC back there, we're having a really, really, really good time. All right, well, I know that Brigadoon disappears sometimes into the mist in Scottish, so in, in Scotland, so y'all go disappear into the night out there. Have fun. Oh, yes, thank you. Oh, so much fun. They even gave me some fun beads. Yeah, we 
We love to hear that. Uh, Jeff, I just got a breaking news tip from my mom okay. about uh, the mermaids. How warm are the mermaid tails? She says they live in the cold depths of the ocean, so we can all deduce that they're they're cold. They're cold blooded. So, uh, listen, I just report what I'm told. And I can also report that my mom is currently watching the parade. We so. might need to fact check that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mom. <laughs> so now you know the Ye Mr. Crew of the Nautilus is coming up, and they are looking to have a good time. See all those happy pirates waving atop the float. Founded in 2003, the crew's mission is to promote environmental awareness oh, I like that. and conservation through participation. I love environmental awareness. The crew models itself after the 19th century fictional submarine and environmentally conscious crew and captain of the Nautilus, similar to the Jules Verne classic 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. And the float is a replica of the Nautilus submarine with a giant red squid, which apparently is attacking. Oh, oh and there's an eel. There's an eel in the yeah. front there. Yeah. There's a lot happening there. That's a moray that eel right there. It's elaborate. You don't want to get too close. You don't. Although they do look like they're having fun despite being attacked. I really like this one. They have portals. You see the portals? It's awesome. This is really cool. Hey, guys. And they're ha happy, happy to see us, too. Mm -hmm. And I like their music. Love to see you guys. The crew of Les Belles Femmes is coming up. This is a float called the Moulin Rouge. See if you can figure out why. Mm -hmm. Features the Eiffel Tower, a lively street scene depicting the famous Moulin Rouge and the Arc de Triomphe of Paris, France. 19th anniversary in the parade for these fine folks. So they're a female crew with a male auxiliary. Okay. Um, they have about 72 members and they were founded in 2002 in celebration of the first parades in Europe that led to Mardi Gras and Gasparilla. So a male auxiliary called Le Beau, does that mean they're like the assistants, the yeah. helpers, the... The slaves. Slaves. The slaves. Yeah. Yes. All right, I'm cool with that. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. <laughs> the Tampa Bay Rays are coming up next. Who doesn't love the Tampa Bay Rays? American League baseball team. Their mascot. Now, do you know you've been gone for a while? So let me refresh you on who they were. The is. Devil Rays when I was here That's the first time right. around. We are just the Tampa Bay Rays okay. now. The mascots are Raymond and DJ Kitty. You see them yep, on top. I see them Looking right at there. them now. Not awesome. many teams have two two mascots. That's true, but yeah. you know what? Take a closer look. The Rowdies mascots are on board too, right in front on the truck with Pete the Pelican and Penny the Pelican All on right. board as well. So. The Tampa Bay Rays crew wearing Rays gear. You know, uh, pitchers and catchers are going to report to spring training in less than three weeks. Can you believe what? it's cold? It's cold out, so you're it's thinking hard to think spring about that training. It's only three weeks from today, and opening day is Thursday, March 31st, against the Boston Red Sox. Ooh. Now, I'm from New York City, so I do not like myself the Red Sox. So. Careful now, careful. My husband uh -oh. grew up in Boston, so we, we have to play nice. Chamberlain High School is coming up right now. They're the Fighting Chiefs. Their colors green, gold, and white, and their band director is Aaron Schmidt. They have about 50 marchers, and of note, the Chamberlain High School opened in 1956 That's on right. North Boulevard and is named in honor of George D. Chamberlain, who served as trustee for the Hillsborough County School System. Let's listen in. Yep. carries the 2021 Royal Court and the crew's king and queen, Scott Wilson and Ansley Blackwell. And the members float is a castle filled with knights. And there's also a crew trolley, which carries new members. Ooh. And the costumes are uh, to resemble the dress of the late Middle Ages. A crew trolley? Mm -hmm. That's pretty sweet. The float, the trolley. I guess you have to graduate to the float from the trolley, you think? 
Uh, I, you know what? I'd be happy with either one. That's right. Yep. To participate in the parade, throw some bees, have people cheer at you, you know, two or 300,000 so of your bad. closest friends. Not a bad day so in Tampa bad. Bay. You are watching the Seminole Hard Rock Casper of Pirate Fest Parade of Pirates, and there's plenty more parade to come. Stay with us. All right, welcome, welcome back. back. Yeah, that you're watching the Seminole Hard Rock Gasper the Pirate Fest Parade of Pirates. You know, we left. We were watching the Knights of Santiago. They've got two cars, three floats, and still, yep, it's still them. the Knights of Santiago. I can only imagine how long it takes to, I keep saying that, but it must take months and months and months to do, to put these, these together. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They're incredible. And the costumes, too. I mean, take a look at some of these costumes. Elaborately done. I'm told that some of these are thousands of dollars wow, for these really? handmade costumes. And they are looking sharp on this parade day. Now, this crew was chartered in Tampa back in 1972 by a Spanish nobleman, the Baron of Santiago. Uh, the crew is related to an ancient order of knights founded in Spain in the uh, 12th century. And the crew hosts the Santiago Night Parade in Ybor City. Which is Saturday, deal. February 12th. Yep, kind of a big deal. Day before the Super Bowl, that'll be a fun weekend. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> hey guys, hey, beads, beads, send us beads. That's right. Isn't that what everyone here is chanting? Yeah. Beads, beads, beads. All right, we got one, we got one. All right, sweet. Yeah. Oh, and they have, oh, Thank let's you. take a closer look. Thank the Knights you. of Santiago sending some beads our way. All right. All right. I think we go. may need to take a look. Now, see, let me just give you a quick bead tutorial. All right. These big ones, these are those the good are, ones. Those are the important ones. Those are the good okay. ones. Those right. are the ones, like, when you become a bead snob, that's when you'll be like, oh, I'm going to keep these. Now, these are a little tangled. That's all right. You just wear them all. Oh, wear, oh. Wear all Can those. I put them on? Yeah, do it. All right. Wow. This is this is impressive. Yeah, okay, hold on a second. Do. All right. This is like, you know, Gracie Lee, my daughter, and my wife are going to have They're going to love they're this. They're going to for life. Yeah, that's right. Yep. This is bead wearing 101. Yep. There we go. Don't you feel I'm doing pretty. I'm now? doing pretty good. Not too shabby. Oh, yes, this is pretty good. I like it. <laughs> yes, this is great. You know, as the sun is sort of dipping, it's getting colder. So is the temperature. Yeah, it is it's chilly. starting to feel a little chillier. Aren't you glad you're dressed in layers? Because it I is, start, you know, I was saying it is not cold if you're out for an hour. It's not cold if you're in the sun the whole time. But over the course of like four hours outside, it gets to your bones. It does. Yeah. But you know what? I have a parade to keep me happy and warm from the inside out. And I don't want you to take offense to this, but uh, there are 13 ugly men coming. <laughs> it's true. But yes. that's the name of our next yeah. crew. It's uh, the 13 Ugly Men Foundation. And they and I know of them. You do? Yes, and because they do really great work in the community. They certainly do. In fact, they have a two-story black float. They're wearing all black, the 13 Ugly Men, logoed long sleeve t-shirt and polo shirts. They do a ton of work in the community. The foundation has raised over $2 million and donated it to local charities that are vetted and considered the best in Tampa Bay through its practices. Now, the foundation hosts events annually. Their signature event is the White Party, held in late April. The 13 Ugly Men first appeared in the Tampa area back in the 1990s as a group of 13. I don't know if they were ugly, though. 
I mean, it, 13 founding members, but were they really ugly? No, I've seen them. They're not. Okay. They're, oh, okay. they're easy on the eyes. Okay. It's fine. All right. So they're self-deprecating, which, which is always it's good. one of my favorite things. Yes, it's, it's a great quality. A little sarcasm goes uh -huh. a long way. Uh -huh. So I like 13 Ugly Men Foundation. $2 million. Ye, no ye notorious crew of the Peg Leg Pirate is coming your way next, Jeff. Founded in 2004 after one of the founders was struck by a truck and lost a leg. So they decided we're going to do something with that. 75 members from all over the Tampa Bay area wearing red shirts, black pants, or skirt, black vests or corsets, and black boots. Now their admiral is April Kennedy, and their captain is Matt Pinter. So a girl boss here. <laughs> the mighty crew with a cause. Their main interest and goal is to provide amputees in the Tampa Bay area with prosthetics that they may not be able to afford otherwise. So a really great and important work. You know, kind of a nod back to their founder who was struck by a truck and lost a leg, so. Yep, and the crew gives back to children who are amputees so they have a sense of normalcy when they're dealing with their health concerns. Shriners Hospital for Children and the Foot Foundation as well. Love to hear that. You know, you notorious crew of the Peg Leg Pirates. Say that three times fast. I love it, and we got beads coming our way. Oh, here we go. Yep, the beads are coming fast and furious. We got them now. Okay, next up, you see these firemen-looking types coming. This is the crew of St. Florian. This crew is comprised of career firefighters, both active and retired from the Tampa Bay area. Nice. Oh, and uh, we're going to go to Lee Spann, who has an interview. Oh, we don't have her yet, but we will have her soon. And when we do, we will be tossing it right to her. Uh, there's 85 members representing 15 different fire departments. The wives, the girlfriends of the members walking in the parade are called Flames. Oh, yes. okay. That's hot. All right, we're going to go to Lee on the street. I, yeah, That's and yes, hot. Flames are hot, and yes. Yeah. I, love, I love all the jokes. I love, Lee, all what do you right. think of those so jokes? I'm here with Vince Kipner, and uh, tell us a little bit about why you guys chose the, the, the firefighters as sort of your, your inspiration. Well, we're a 501c3 made up of strictly firefighters from the Central Florida area. Okay. So we do charitable work for the community, and it's all just firefighters and their wives or girlfriends. And how long have you guys been part of Gas Gorilla? Since 1999. 1999. So what's today been like for you guys? Today is awesome getting back to it after two years without it with COVID. Everybody's so excited. Uh, we're just having a great time. Well, thank you for all you do to, to save us in our, in our times of need, and I hope you're getting to celebrate yes, for today. Are. Yes, we are. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ben. We love to see them, Lee. Thank you so much for doing that work down on the parade route for us. We appreciate you as well. The crew of Queen Anne's Revenge is mm, up next. Okay. Well, who are they getting revenge on? Mm, that's a good yeah. question. Yeah. Maybe all of us? No. Oh. Uh-oh. Just beware. Okay. The Florida de Lee is their theme. The first float, they have a few here, so so buckle in. I'm buckled. The shows, the first float shows the shipwreck of Queen Anne's Revenge with the pink sails and Captain Blackbeard's treasure chest amongst a beautiful coral reef surrounded by exotic fish and sea life. They have a lot of people. Soak it in. They have yeah. a lot of people in their crew. This is I a mean, good looking crew. Yep, I see that. And, and they will do different costumes yeah. each year. And they look cold. They spare no expense. Oh, I no. mean, it's got to be cold. Cold legs, warm heart. Isn't that the saying? I, I think I've heard that before. Yeah, well, we're going to let you soak in the majesty that is Queen Anne's revenge, but we're also going to take a break. You are watching the Seminole Hard Rock Gasparilla Pirate Fest Parade of Pirates. We are back with more in a moment. <laughs>
All right, welcome back, everybody. You are watching the Seminole Hard Rock Gasparilla Pirate Fest Parade of Pirates, and we are looking at the Thomas Jefferson High School Band, the Marching Dragons. Yeah, the blue and gold. Band director Alex Padigo, principal Robert Quinn, the drum major Christian Lopez. So they are a good-looking group. Let's listen to what they have to offer for a second. They're comprised of 49 members and 11 color guard members. Love it. Jefferson High School, love to see them. The Vista Crew of Gasparilla, Jose Gaspar. Some more cannon fire coming up for you there, Jeff Maradelli. The crew's pirate ship is named for the famous pirate. Ten cannons adorn each side of this fierce warship as she threatens the citizens of Tampa, unless the mayor peacefully surrenders the key to the city, which, as which, we know, which happened. she said, uh, thanks, but no. Yes, I, I remember that, but they got it anyway. They're scallywags yeah. like that. They really are. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just one of the perils of pirateness, I guess. So we have quite a history of Jose Gaspar. It's true, we do. A legendary figure terrorized West Florida waters during the late 18th and early 19th century if you believe he's real. And apparently, if you believe this, he was a lieutenant in the Royal Spanish Navy for five years before he led a mutiny aboard a Spanish sloop of war and turned into a pirate. He ravaged Florida's waters for 12 years, although I read somewhere it was 40 years, until 1821, when the U.S. Navy warship, the USS Enterprise, burned his ship to the water's edge. Legend says that he would not allow himself to be captured and that he seized a heavy chain, wrapped it around his waist and neck, and leaped into the water, brandishing his sword in defiance. You think he was just attention-seeking? No, maybe, I don't know. Crew of castaways. We're looking at these good-looking folks now, celebrating 15 years this parade season. A crack ship with castaways on a desert island. It's a good gig if you can get it in a place like Florida. Tattered shipmates' clothing. The ladies wear navy blue corsets or tunics with cream tattered blouse and khaki pants or skirts with boots. You see them there. They look good, right? And how about the men? They wear navy blue vests with cream tattered shirts, khaki cargoes, and piratey bo piratey boots. Piratey. Piratey. You know, other pertaining to pirates. Mm -hmm. I get that's, it. I get it. Thank that's you. It. That's a thing. Now, the crew has started to provide a forum for its members to socialize, network, promote their own businesses, and have fun while doing it, originally called Steps Castaways. After six years of initial support from Steps Towing, the crew members voted to become an independent crew and changed their name in 2014. Take a look at your screens right now. This is Jesuit High School's football team. Great local kids here. The mascot is the Tigers. And Lee Spann is standing by right now with an interview. Are you with the coach, Lee? I am with the head coach, and I just got the official hat from the champions, Matt Thompson. Tell me about your football team this year and the amazing things they accomplished. Uh, it's hard to put it into words. You know, it's uh, we've been knocking on the door for years, uh, you know, the last four years anyways, and uh, finally, uh, we just put it together, had a great season, and, um, you know, ended up going 15-0 and, wow. and uh, winning the state championship. First time in 53 years. So. Wow. State champions, but also nationally ranked. Yeah, that was uh, surprising. When, when you beat nationally ranked teams, that's what happened. So, you know, the St. Thomas Aquinas game was uh, a huge game for us. Gave us a lot of confidence and, uh, you know, just propelled us, I think, uh, through the state semifinals onto the state championship. We're glad you're part of Gasparilla, but talk a little bit about how important it is to, for, you know, for these young men to be a part of something like a football team, especially a, a championship football team. Yeah, and, and uh, it's, you know, for all these boys back here, uh, it's something that they're never going to forget, that something like this, Gasparilla, you know, 2021 or 22, and uh, it's just, uh, you know, it's amazing, uh, amazing job that they did. Uh, you know, I, I, it's really hard to put in the words, you know. Hopefully we can keep doing it again. So. All right, thank you so much. Congratulations. 15-0. 15-0. 15-0. and The Fighting Tigers. That's a great group of young men. And he's right so there. proud of them. He really is. You can hear Rightfully it. so. Yeah. That's awesome. The Royal Crew of Charlotte DeBerry is coming up behind the Tigers. 
And you hear their song, We Are the Champions. Oh, I do. Yep, they are the champions. They are. They, are. they should be very proud of themselves. They should. The Royal Crew of Charlotte DeBerry, as I was saying, is coming up. The floats designed his tribute to the original Charlotte's vessel with Molly the Mermaid, their mascot on the bow, to guide them through prevailing winds and calm seas. And their motto is a mermaid's spirit with a pirate's heart. And they're oh. celebrating their 22nd year. They're an all-female crew based in Hillsborough County. Nice. They're, yep. They were founded in 2000, apparently, with approximately 60 members. A hearty band of women wearing female pirate period clothing representing wenches, wenches. of all ages. And ethnicities. That's true. <laughs> All right, we're going to be taking a break now. You are watching the Seminole Hard Rock Gasparilla Pirate Fest Parade of Pirates. We'll be back in just a couple of moments. Shiver me timbers, Jeff Baradelli, Jennifer Lee here with the crew of Girls in Pearls on your screen as we speak. The club Pearlesque is designed to resemble the beautiful glitz and glam of a 1950s nightclub complete with velvet ropes and swinging chandeliers. And their costumes are vintage 1950s style with dazzling cocktail dresses, pearls, and gloves. And their motto is, do something fabulous. Oh, Which, being I a Gasparilla, is doing something fabulous. <laughs> Indeed. The crew of Sir Francis Drake is coming right up to the treasure chest float as the first ADA-compliant wheelchair-accessible float ever built in U.S. history, which accommodates our wounded warriors, veterans, and Shriners' children, and people with special needs. Really cool here. And the costumes are 15th century Elizabethan royalty and explorers. It was founded in 2017 by Captain Roland Wood and Queen Renee Wood. Approximately 80 members. Yeah, hey guys. Crew volunteers and works with disabled children and veterans. Look at them there. Hey guys. These are some beautiful oh, costumes. Oh, we're getting some beads. We're getting some beads thrown the at beads us. Beads are coming our know. way. Love to see them. Happy Gasparilla, guys. This is their fifth year doing this. I love it. They're at expert level now. You can tell just by the way they <laughs> toss the beads. The Crow of Ro Rogues is coming up next. This is a 17th century French... Oh, but wait, but wait. I'm just teasing it. Okay, well, You're going to see it in a second. Oh, wait, we're not seeing it's it yet. It's going to be the No, Crow it's there. Rogues. It's there, but it's way back there. Oh, this is a moment for us all to just soak in the crowd, the bead throwing, the ambiance. We could use a little sun around here, by the way. I know. The yeah. sun has the dipped, sun behind, has dipped the behind the trees us, for us. So, yeah. so I got the hand warmers out. And now I've got some scallywags headed our way. The crew of rogues for realsy this time. 17th century French seaside castle called the Pirate's Pub. That's the float you're looking at. All right. Uh, it is the costumes are late 1700s Renaissance outfits. Um, the crew of rogues is founded in uh, 2012. 
uh, from local entrepreneurs and business owners portraying pirates and wenches. Okay, so here's the tale. The okay. rogues started the French Revolution in 1789. They beheaded the king and seized control of the French Riviera as their beautiful new seaside home. Now, the shield is the balance of the earth, water, and air, and fire, and it's centered around the symbol of power, justice, and unity for the French Revolution. And most importantly, the charity work they do. Brooksdale Bayshore Assisted Living Facility, Gasparilla Morning begins with giving beads to the elderly, elderly residents there. I love so, it. Yeah. giving back to those who have watched many a parade before. It's amazing that, you know, Gasparilla has led to so many crews who are doing so much good charity work around the area. I and mean, if it wasn't for this parade, we wouldn't have that. It's, that's Off the right. southernmost point, did they take the actual southernmost point and I move it hope to not Tampa? That might be Because geographically, a that's a problem. That's right. False advertising right there. Yeah. This is the crew of the Conch Republic. This is their fourth year in the parade. The front of the float, as you mentioned, is the 90-mile marker to Cuba. The middle of the float is a tiki bar, obviously. The back of the float, a replica Key West house. Mermaids, or does Hemingway may appear on the float? I mean, they've got it all going on here. And look at how bright and fun they are. Would you mind if I left the booth and, and just got on their float and hung out with them? No, I mean, you do you. I mean, I love Key West. I, I love the Keys. You can't go wrong with them. You cannot go wrong with the keys. It just oh, it he's looks happy. Oh, these guys happy. are having fun. Oh, We're I want to be you with on you that guys. Happy note for All a right. moment. <laughs> you are watching the Seminole Hard Rock Gasparilla Pirate Fest Parade of Pirates, and we'll be back with more fun and festivities in a moment. Welcome back. You are watching the Seminole Hard Rock Gasparilla Pirate Fest Parade of Pirates, and we are having a great time. Jen Lee here alongside Jeff Baradelli, our new chief meteorologist. It's a good day in Tampa Bay. And we are looking at the crew of Paradise, and I believe Lee Spann is down with the crew members. Lee? Yes, I'm with the president, Erica Subero, and you're right. It's Paradise, and it's a pair of dice with your crew. We founded in 1995, so we're on our 27th year. We had our charities that we do, our the Animal Coalition of Tampa. Our first charity is the Good Samaritan, Good Samaritan Mission. And uh, we do fundraising throughout the year to give back to the community, and that's our goal. We love doing parades, but our biggest goal is giving back to the community. And your entire, because obviously paradise, yes. your entire float looks like a riverboat. Crew. Yes, yes, riverboat with uh, Western gamblers and saloon showgirls. We throw out dice beads. And so if you get a, if you get some dice beads, they come from paradise. Thank you, Erica. Thank you, guys, so much. Have a great time on Gasparilla. Look at those. That's pretty cool, oh, right? That's nice. I like those. Those are awesome. Those are nice. I love it. Thank you, Lee. All right. We'll be back in just a couple of seconds. You are watching the Seminole Hard Rock Gasparilla Pirate Fest Parade of Pirates.
Welcome back. You are watching the Seminole Hard Rock Gasparilla Pirate Fest Parade of Pirates. We're happy to have you with us on this gorgeous day in Tampa Bay. It is chilly, Jeff. It is chilly. It's getting but chilly. we are having a great parade. And the float that you're looking at is the Sirens of the Golden Saber. It is a female-only crew with 75 ladies from the Bay Area, founded back in 2001. Uh, the costumes are sexy, yet classy. I agree. Mm -hmm. I heart meaty, uh, 98 Rock is what we're looking at right here. 98 Rock, Tampa Bay's rock station found on 97.9 FM, playing rock from the 60s to today. It is the radio home of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We love to have them in the parade. And riding on the float are Crash and AJ on the air weekday mornings from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. with the world famous Florida or not Florida, Big Rick. <laughs> Tampa Bay radio legend who's been on the 98 Rock mic for over 30 years. Big Rick, love him. Next, next up is crew of Princess Ulele. Oh, wow. Native American inspired mock suede costumes with pink, turquoise, and tan accents personalized with beading, embroidery, and fringe. The float features a Native American theme, large scale replica of a canoe decorated with oh, beautiful like hibiscus nice. flowers. The hibiscus, by the way, the crew's signature flower. All right. They are a 70-plus member crew, and they're all women from Pinellas County. Not crew it. is named after the legend of Princess Ulele, a Native American woman from southern Pinellas County who begged her father, the chief of a certain tribe that I can't pronounce the name of, uh, to spare the life of a captured Spanish sailor, Juan Ortiz. The Tocobaga tri tribe, right? Uh, that sounds... Yeah, I'm you got it. it. I, you're very good at this. You, I have to tell you, I am impressed. Here's you're impressed. the thing. You say it, and Twitter tells you if you're right or wrong. Okay. Is that how it works? That's typically and how it works. And if Twitter says it, then that's, it's right? That's my personal experience. You'll get a tweet. The crew of Blackbeard's Revenge. Am I right? That's what we're looking at. It's so great to see them back in the parade. They were founded on May 9th, 2011. They're also known as the Pirates Providing for People. And for 2022, the crew are wearing fake black beards in honor of a founding member that recently passed away. Based on the pirate Blackbeard, known for terrorizing the high seas in the early 1700s. They have 100 members dressed as gypsies and marauders of the sea, working together to make a difference, led by Blackbeard, Tampa native Bobby Schatzberg. Is that right? I think okay. you nailed that. Okay. The crew has raised over $300,000 to benefit charities like the American Cancer Society, Autism Speak, Shriners Hospitals for Children, The Spring. I mean, the list goes on and on. They do a lot of great work yeah. in the community. The crew of Blackbeard's, Re Blackbeard's Revenge. The Anna Maria Island Privateers are coming up next, and they are are a great group as well. Their float is a pirate ship named the Scullywag. Get it? Like Scallywag? Yep, I like it, but it's that Scully. That's right. Built on an old Hillsborough County School Board bus. Named in 2007 in memory of late privateer Jim Scully Hungerford, who was instrumental in getting the ship built. All right. Most privateers didn't conform to a uniform, so each member creates their own unique outfit, loosely pirate winch-based with the crew logo somewhere on the outfit, and they were established back in uh, 1971. They've raised 300,000 in local scholarships. Such a wonderful day we have had here. Oh. The parade continues. The crowd, I mean, I really haven't seen many people leave. You know, sometimes nope. you see the stragglers, like, making their ways towards their cars, but still a ton, thousands of people out here along Bayshore Boulevard to enjoy the parade. It's been a beautiful day. It is cold, for sure. <laughs> you know, it's, it was started out decent, but, you know, as time goes on, that cold wears on you. But it's been great anyway. I mean, what a wonderful parade. People, you know, it, it doesn't feel crazy. People are respectful. They they're they're so good far. people are having nice. a good time. Yeah, it's really we, good to see. We've got a lot of beads. You feel pretty good about your home? Uh, yeah, but I think as I go home, I'm going to try to get a couple more. Oh, okay. Uh, see what okay. we can do. See what we can do. Well, that's going to conclude our coverage of the 2022 Seminole Hard Rock Gasparilla Pirate Fest Parade of Pil Pirates. Before we leave, though, we want to say goodbye to Lee, right? Is she yeah. Is she out there? Oh, she is there. I see her. She's Hi, waving. Everybody. Hi, Hi. Oh, my gosh. It's so much fun to be out there on the pirate on the street, mingling with all the pirates out there and all the crew. Y'all did such a great job. We love seeing you. You're close. <laughs> I can't hear you. I know. We need to, like, mime to each other so that...
we can actually talk. At this point, yeah. There's no loud. hearing it's, anything. But it's great. All right. It's time to go, but we had a great time. We did have a great yeah. time. Thanks again for watching the 2022 Parade of Pirates on News Channel 8. A reminder, you can watch an encore presentation of this parade coverage on Sunday night starting at 5 p.m. on our sister station, WTTA Great 38. Plus, get Gasparilla highlights now on WFLA.com and the News Channel 8 app. And we're going to be joining NBC's coverage of the Pegasus World Cup horse race already in progress. We'll see you next year. Have a great Gasparilla weekend, everybody. Happy Gasparilla! Live coverage of the 2022 Seminole Hard Rock Gasparilla Pirate Fest and Gasparilla Parade of Pirates, presented by Ye Mystic Crew of Gasparilla. Gasparilla Pirate Fest, sponsored by Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino Tampa. Discover your rhythm at Central Florida's premier resort destination. Bud Light Seltzer, no beer, just great taste. And Ye Mystic Crew of Gasparilla, proudly presenting Tampa's signature Gasparilla events since 1904. News Channel H broadcast is sponsored by New South Window Solutions, the ultimate Florida window. Visit NewSouthWindow.com for more information. Tampa General Hospital. Other hospitals practice medicine. We define it. Diamonds International. For all your treasure needs, come see the sparkle for yourself. And Frontier. Do what cable can't with Frontier's 100% fiber optic network. Is this Mr. Scurvy Shorts? It is. Oh, yes, sir. I'm with Acme Pirate Ship Warranty. Now, according to our records, your pirate ship warranty has expired, and we want to make sure you don't get caught on the rocks or walking the plank uninsured. <laughs> That's a little pirate insurance joke. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. Did you? Uh, Mr. Scurvy Shorts? Hello? Mr. Scurvy Shorts, are you there? Hello? Hello?